Hi there, welcome to Shaky Sports Journeys. Um, we we recently had uh, an episode where uh, I managed to get together the X3 World Cup 50 over captains for Scotland. Uh, it was a great discussion. So I thought, why not bring another bunch of guys together who have something in common? All of Captain Scotland, um, Ryan Watson, Gavin Hamilton and Kyle Kutzer. Uh, welcome to the episode. Thanks for having us, Shaky, again. Thank you, Shaky. Yeah, looking forward to it. Good evening, gents. Well, first of all, Gavin Hamilton, back by popular demand. Popular episode, mate. Ryan Watson, I have to say on record, apologies. Uh, we were due to have a podcast and I've recorded 45 odd podcasts and I still don't know how I didn't show up. It was nothing, <laughs> it was nothing personal or anything like that. I was juggling my daughter at the time when you called to ask me, are we using Zoom for this? And I realised that. So, sorry, Shaky. Record. So, so Ryan, just to be clear, was the only one you've not turned up for. Yeah, exactly. That sounds that sounds terrible because I know I have a little pop at Rhino here and there over selections, but uh, it really wasn't the case, and I'm I, I'm sincerely sorry. Um, and okay. obviously joined by current current captain uh, who was rocking a cap last time he's rocking a bald napper this time um, and he seems to have what looks like Gavin Hamilton in the background Yeah, I thought it was quite uh, quite convenient, it was, it was his T20 World Cup shirt so yeah, um, I thought it suited, suited uh, we're going to ask more questions around that It puts a nice shine on the top of your head mate it does, like shaky. Like I said just before we started recording, I was rushing a little bit, and the 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 clippers just ran out of juice, so I was a little bit panicking. I thought sure you were maybe busy washing and conditioning that thing, but that can't take too long. No, no, it, it doesn't take very long, mate. But uh, you know, I see Gav's trying to sport a, a similar look these days, so he's he's following the good trend. It's lockdown uh, look, got, isn't it? Uh, Gav's got a bit of a. Uh, he's got like a Bruce Willis thing going on there. Thanks, mate. I'm a very similar kind of blokes. Excellent. And Ryan, you still look about you've you've got rosy cheeks and a nice head of hair. You're aging well, mate. I know, I know. A bit chilly up here in Scotland, being out having a kickabout with the kids, but no, I've still got hair. And uh yeah, I mean Gav is obviously down to having a young one, so um yeah, <laughs> and, and not getting any sleep. So no no we're <laughs> We're still falling in lockdown, busy as, but all good, all good. Homeschooling, don't recommend it. I, I've, heard uh, it I've heard it's, uh, I've heard it's pretty stressful. Facing Sean Tate's a lot easier than homeschooling. I can guarantee you um, that one. So not good, not good. That's a big shout, that Rhino. But yeah, honestly, yeah, honestly, yeah. Shut up, Ryan. Sean <laughs> Tate blindfolded. Sean Tate blindfolded is easier than homeschooling, Gab. Trust me. <laughs> So, chaps, we're going to have a bit of fun today. We're going to talk about um, Scotland are taking part in three T20 World Cups. Um, so, I bring that. So, we brought you all together today. Ryan Watson was the captain at the 2007 World Cup in South Africa. Gavin Hamilton, 2009 <coughs> T20 World Cup captain in England. Um, and Kyle Kutzer will step in to represent uh, Preston Momsen, who, who led the team in the 2016 T20 World Cup. Um, so we're just going to get straight into it. I'm going to come to you first, Ryan, um, and just ask you, tell me a little bit about your qualification for the 2007 World Cup. Uh, well, we were just debating just before we came on how we actually all qualified for these events. But I believe, and hopefully there'll be some cricket enthusiasts that might correct us, I believe we qualified for this in India, uh, in Kenya, sorry, playing a six-man sort of champions uh, sort of tournament um, there were six teams in Kenya and we managed to finish second and got to the final, lost against Kenya in a in a bit of a one-sided affair, but had played great cricket the five games previous to that and uh, and that's how we qualified. Top two teams, top two teams got through. Thanks, Kyle. Brilliant pick. That's I thought lovely. it was David Averhoff. That's, well, that's, well, that's, well, that's obviously post-Bangladesh where I top one in the eye, so that's actually cruelty to um, people with bad eyes, Kyle. Um, so, yeah, we, we played that in Kenya and, um, yeah, like I said, played really good cricket. It was roasting very, very hot. Um, but, yeah, as a team, I think we won first time probably that we won probably three games, Gav, if you remember, where we actually shouldn't have won them. Um, normally, we were always on the other end of those results yeah. and we won three games. We beat Ireland. We were, geez, we were 60-odd for first four, game. chasing first two game, yeah. 
Yep. Right, he hit Slot. 16 off the last over, I think. Correct. That's spot on. And then we beat um, we beat Holland. They were chasing easily, and we got maybe a run out, which turned the game. And then Ross Lyons bowled really well at the death, and we, we won a game that we should. Hoffy bowled an unbelievable. It was Hoffy. Hoffy got. Hoffy. got do you remember us celebrating yeah. running to the side of the boundary? They yeah, needed he did a slide, five, which never there. slid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a big one. <laughs> and then actually Canada. If you're, oh, that's brilliant, Carl. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Um, Canada uh, again. That was marred by a Hoffy incident with a shoulder barge. Um, but again, they were a strong side. But Guy got a good hundred, and we probably won another game there. We we shouldn't have. We beat Kenya bizarrely, really yeah. easy in uh, the round games. And I can't remember who's. So yeah, um, Bermuda. Bermuda. Shape. Yeah, Bermuda. And if I'm correct in saying Ireland didn't actually qualify, and they were they were a pretty glum bunch. They actually lost yeah. three games that they should have won. So yeah, they lost three games in the qualifiers. But I remember that. That's one of my favourite tours, that ride. Right? Because do you remember we played in, in uh, Bulawayo? No, Bulawayo, Botswana. No, what was the place um, on, the, um, on the coast? Yeah, they're just different countries, Gav, but Mombasa. Yeah, yeah Mombasa. Because <laughs> um, you remember people came down, they were really sick. And um, we ended up, we played those qualifying games against Canada and, Ke- and we just got stuffed, didn't we? We oh, couldn't we win the game. Absolutely gubbed, yeah. And then as yeah. soon as the tournament started, it, I think it was some of the best cricket in terms of, Having we didn't change the team throughout the whole tournament, we played eleven players, and we all the way through. Ah, uh, you're long. We, we changed until the, the last one. Yeah, yeah. And Omar yeah. came in. Omi came in and came in for uh, whoever I can't remember. And Wright and Glenn Rogers went home ill, if you remember. And, that's uh, right. Glenn came in. He got typhoid. Um, that's right. And then and then he. Right. And, I remember that he was really out. Yeah, very eight, eight, eight of us dropped it, and I, I remember keeping that one game against um, against uh, Kenya. Had to keep one. It was, but it was about forty-two degrees, wasn't it? It was just obscene. Yeah, Mombasa. Yeah, we, we, to be fair though, we had we had trained really well, and, and that was remember we had Jacko as the fitness coach, and, he, yeah. and we were we were as fit as we were ever as a squad. We started. Do you remember the Drino with the big hydration? That's where it started with with hydration, and Majid struggled with the hydration. With yeah, uh, it was his, an issue his hydration with levels were never good. Is that as well when we had to start all? Pissing in the same blood. Yeah, game. yeah, the osmosis machine, the yeah. hydration thing. When that was Mag- horrible. Mag- we, we, Mag- we, we just put sand we, on the machine. Do you remember Magic used to just put sand and he would be thought- a. <laughs> Madge would be eating sandburgers all the time, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. sandburger. And we, he just, we thought he was pissing Moroccan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, Ryder, just on that, because I remember we, we just beat the Nuda with that chain team because we were qualified. And then we just, um, and then we went to the final, and I think we took a foot off our gas. And I remember, I think that's where me and probably Pete Drimmin started falling out a little bit. I got my back up because we we came qualified, but we came second. Whereas the way we were playing, we yeah, could exactly. have walked the whole tournament. We smashed around our squads and stuff. But look, it is what it is. Yeah, we but. changed the team. Yeah, I remember, Gab. If you were, if you didn't make it as a cricketer after that particular thing, we did go to the World Cup. You had a good chance of being. Swimming for Scotland, I think you were <laughs> right into your laps at that particular point, Gav. Uh... I think we're fit boys, right? We're fit boys. Yeah, it, was exactly. a, it, was a, it was a non-drinking tour, that. I remember that. It really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. <laughs> we obviously can't talk too much about it, but there was a Tusker tray where there was a, a competition <laughs> and John Rooney ended up losing it, if you remember. But we won't talk about the winning prize. But, uh, yeah, good laugh. You can, Very good. Anything, good you can talk about anything on this podcast, right? Not probably it's that, Shaky. No, no, that's probably... Sure, you know, yeah, that's fine. Any trouble, so so you, can, <laughs> you, can let, you can let go. So... Interesting, really good performance. Then, um, you know that was that was pretty convincing from you boys going going away out there in conditions that were probably a bit a little bit alien to you in the heat as well, and you performed really well. Um, and you know, happy days through to through to the through to the World Cup. Moving on, Gav. Two thousand and nine. How did you qualify? Well, funny enough, like Rice said, we'll discuss it because around that time, the sort of 2007, 2008, there was a World Cup in between. We obviously went into the West Indies after qualifying for um, for the South Africa tournament. So it was a really sort of hectic couple of months. I remember we took, I think we had three months off work, Ryan, if I remember. We were both at Caledonian Brewery at the time. We were, yeah. I think we only so, worked three months, Gav. <laughs> yeah. so we had two weeks that year and then obviously we had that we had a really sort of it was a strange qualifying tournament in Ireland I think yeah. we had a we had a few selection issues and we had a couple of 
a couple of lads that were working that couldn't get time off. And if my memory serves me correctly, I think Ryan will probably touch on it, is that we, I don't think we qualified, but the Zimbabwe, for political reasons, pulled out, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. if that's right. So I remember, I think I played only two games in that and I was in and out of the tournament. I can't remember for whatever reason. So we had a really sort of um, uh, a mixed bag in terms of our I squad. Also think, I also think, Gab, I, I also think maybe at that time, well, we're not between, were we between coaches? Because I thought Andy Tennant took us. Um, May well be. So we were just in a bit of limbo at that particular stage. It was in, yeah. it was in storm at the weather. Yeah, it was a strange weather, time, storm. wasn't it? It was a really, yeah. like, to be perfectly honest, we, <laughs> like we said before we came on, we couldn't actually, it's really unusual for us not to remember a World Cup qualifying tournament because I knew it was weather affected, the teams are in and out. I remember yeah. beating Holland, I think we beat Ireland or something. So we did okay. But I, I oh, remember uh, missing out and then just coming through for political reasons, which... I think we won a good long, game against... How long, how long after did you find out? It's it was lovely. pretty. It was. It wasn't long at all. It was. It was. Yeah. I think it was. Just really. It was touch and go whether they were actually going to be actually bothering coming to the qualifying tournament. I think so. Um, it, we always knew in the back of our, our mind that if we came third, we had a really good sniff of qualifying. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Zimbabwe with, were withdrawn for reasons. So. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle, yeah. Two thousand and sixteen. How'd you qualify? Yeah, that's good timing. That shaky because I've just finished writing it all down. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, <laughs> um, we we played the qualifier in Scotland uh, and Ireland, and uh, there were six games in the in the group stages, uh, and we started off pretty well, beating UA UAE quite convincingly, and then then we went on to lose against uh, Netherlands and Afghanistan, who were you know, two big teams in in our group, and and pretty disappointing to lose to both those sides. Um, I, one memory I do remember uh, of the Afghan game was uh, Mark Watt getting hit over point by Mohammed Shazad a couple of times, which was quite entertaining to watch. Um, like, uh, obviously, a pretty, pretty special cricketer when he gets himself going, and 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 he sort of took us apart, really. Um, but then uh, we we clawed it all back, typical Scottish fashion, um, you know, not not doing it convincingly I guess uh, in the group stages but we we then won our next three games so we won four out of our six games so we beat Kenya, Canada and Oman all pretty convincingly uh, and, and I think we I can't remember exactly how the, the, the groups fell and where Afghanistan fell within that and uh, getting through the next round but I do remember we were pretty lucky with the weather we um, whether it was it probably um more by accident, but they had a few fixtures at Sterling, which might have gone our favour because it was the, the end of the world at Sterling for, for half of that tournament. So they had a few games rained out, which might have might have helped us a bit. But then we uh, we cruised on and, and beat Hong Kong convincingly in the in the semi final, and and sadly we had to share the trophy with the Dutch, which was it was turning out to be a uh, you know a pretty good tournament in the end, uh, and the last the, the final was rained out with no no rain days, so. Um, saying that we uh, we we won all bar you know, two games I guess qualifying tournaments losing two games quite a big thing but um, uh, once we got past that we, we were never looking back to be honest we played some some pretty pretty good cricket I think that was the start of us really starting to kick on as a as a T20 team actually uh, with that with that group of players nice nice so showed a bit of character after after a couple of defeats um, I managed to. Managed to get through. Which so who qualified? Who, was it yourselves, the Dutch, anyone else? Yeah, it was. It was Scotland, Holland, Hong Kong, and it would have been Ireland. So it would have been the, the four of us. Um, uh, I do remember sitting classic qualifying tournament campaign when you're sort of waiting for other results to come through and, uh... and sitting at the Holiday Inn there. Um, I've been in the wrong side of it before where, when we were in must have been the previous qualifying campaign perhaps in Dubai where we had an iffy game against Denmark and USA and, and, and whatnot and then you sit in there and you lose by point whatever it is of a run and then uh, this time uh, we're sat there probably already with a beer in our hands knowing that um, we were okay uh, waiting for a result to come through and it came through quite early so we enjoyed ourselves that evening. Nice, nice. So moving on, chaps, um, talk to me about the preparation for going into the tournament. Again, we'll start with you, Ryan. 
Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I mean, it's, again, it's, I mean, it, it, South Africa, great trip, but it had been such a busy year. So I don't, I don't remember us having can, a huge. I can, refresh, I can refresh your memory a little bit. Yeah. It wasn't really, it, we never really, you're right, it was a very yeah, busy uh, calendar. Very busy. So we didn't have a huge amount of prep. Huh? We had a couple of games at Grange. I even remember Gav came up for one of them. Yeah. Uh, one of them was rained off as well. Yeah, one of them was rained off. Um, <clears throat> and we played a game against, I think we played Grange. We had George Bailey. Yeah, um, we did. Yeah. Time. When did we when did we play that Lashings team? Was that that year, 2007, or was that after that? I I, I remember because I remember thinking, I mean, but to be fair, the whole world was fairly naive to the world of T20 at that stage. Yeah. So, you know, a good score, 120, 130. Um, but yeah, we didn't we hadn't played a lot of T20 cricket. Mm -hmm. Um you know, and even now the skills that the guys talk about and execute and, you know, I can even remember just our bowling attack was just stock standard, maybe the odd slower ball here and there. So. Never, never, had, never had a plan, did we? No, no, it wasn't, no it wasn't we, really. We, we, it wasn't really. If you think back, it was yeah. kind of alien to everybody in uh, right. short form of the game. But we did. We played a, we played a couple of bounce games and one rained off and there was another game at the Grange. Um, and I've actually got... I actually, I actually called off playing in that game in the morning, and I have to put this on record and saying because I've had my fallout with Mr. Pete Steindl before, but it was actually Pete who called me up and said, pretty much the team for the World Cup is going to get picked from this, from this, from the, who does well in this game tonight. So I remember that game well because I, I came to it to play the game, and got got a couple, so managed to get managed to get in the mix. Was it you, Ryan, that fought my cause to get in the squad? Must have been shaky, yeah. If I'd known you were going to stand me up on the thing, do you know what? Right, I, I remember all the all the team talks and conversations, uh, but no, I, well, I, I say because they were they were so lengthy and so long. So I don't know if you remember them, Gav and Carl. You know, you would have selections pre tour, absolutely, and, and you, by the end of it, you you can't remember who you were, you know, fighting a course for. So, but no, I I, I remember the squad. I mean, if you look at the names on the squad and, and you think. I mean, at the time, I think everyone was kind of picked pretty much on on kind of merit. There, there wasn't, I don't remember there being any shocks, do you, in terms of the 15 and perhaps, yeah. No, no not really. Why was why was Kyle not, was Kyle not in contention for that? Yeah, that's probably a good question. Um, he was labelled probably a four-day specialist after doing so well in, um, you know, in Dubai and but, but don't but don't forget in, in those days the county cricket came first without a shadow yeah. of a doubt you would never <laughs> you would never contemplate you know a World Cup yeah yes you'd have probably had a dabble in it but I think you'd, well, you'd have been at Durham then Kyle you yeah, yeah but that was yeah. that was October time so it, I really can't even tell you why Carl probably wasn't I had a similar conversation on the fifty over World Cup one and I, I called right here for not selecting Kyle for the two thousand and seven fifty over World Cup. And Wrighty's explanation kind of matched what Gav was saying. That you know didn't really see much of him at that time. It was he was very Durham. You know, it was focus was on Durham at the time. Um, maybe I can't uh, actually think of a good reason why Kyle. You know, if you look at love Kyle, you Kyle was you. I always. I mean, I'm not saying this, you. You were a big fan of Kyle. So oh, I'm a huge fan of Kyle. I'm still, uh, even with that picture in the background, I'm still a big fan. Um, <laughs> but there's no like if you look at everything in terms of the makeup, and I suppose again though it's. If no one's playing T20 cricket and it wasn't big at that time, well, what are you judging people on? You know, he was quite a, probably at the time, you know, quite an orthodox batsman. You know, listen, I'm pretty sure we <laughs> were the advantage right, of... Ryan, Ryan, it's fine. Keep, keep digging a hole there, mate. It's fine. Don't worry. Hey, I can't even remember the selection meeting. I'm going to say with the advantage of hindsight, it's pretty obvious we got it wrong. Kyle, can you remember why you got left out? No, no. I mean, I, I like... There was no way I was I was up to it then. Like, uh, you know, you were you probably always, injured. You, always... you had a bad injury record. I'm sure you were injured. We'll just blame it on that. Yeah, uh, maybe yeah. injured. But we did. But we played. We played. I'm sure we got two or three games in in South Africa pre World Cup. No, we, we, we played Zimbabwe, Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh is Centurion, didn't we? That's yeah. right. On two great wickets, unbelievably yeah. rose we got, wickets. We, we got stuffed twice, didn't we? I think Zimbabwe was close. We should have beaten Zimbabwe. You got, I think you, you opened up, Ryan. You got about sixty odd in that game against Zimbabwe. Yeah, I remember that. It was an absolute belt of a wicket. Oh, um, let's not, well, let's not fast forward too much because we're okay, still, sorry. Still, so we'll talk. We'll get to those points. But <coughs> selection wise, your team pretty much picked itself. You had all most of your your your, your senior except for Kyle Kutzer. Yeah, we've we've probably missed Kyle Kutzer. 
Um, uh, you, so yeah, Kyle can only can only apologise. You know, I'm used to it with Ryan Watson, so you guess you have to you have to take take it <laughs> take it as it comes, mate. Um, but that, that aside, you're right, Ryan. There was really not very much preparation. Um, it was a total unknown, and it was a matter of pretty much getting in that plane with the with 15 guys, hopefully, and with, with a hope that you know what, there's not much, there's you know, not much to lose going up against two really top teams. But we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that as well. Gav, talk to me about <coughs> your preparation and and squad selections and whatnot leading into yeah, your campaign. Yeah. Yeah, I think we had a we had quite a we had a, a quite a youngish side at, for, for a call. Um, obviously, I thought Nella was coming through. Glenn Roberts and spinners wise, uh, Majid was probably I would say probably bowling at his best in those days. Obviously, he got better as he got older, but he was just coming into a to sort of holding his place. Um, yeah, and obviously Carl was there, wasn't he? There's Maka. So we had quite a sort of and Wrighty was in it. Obviously, Rhino. So we had a bit of a Smithy. So we had a really mixed bag of youngsters and. But same, we, I thought about this quite a bit. I mean, we, we didn't have a plan, even what, another two years later. We didn't have a, a T20 plan. We didn't have a, a plan around where people were back. We were just, I remember it because I, I was thinking, I just want two of our players to be in form. I remember this because we played at Worsley a couple of warm-up games. We played yeah. Bangladesh, uh, an all-stars team, and West Indies, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, West Indies, yeah. Yeah, and we, we played some nice stuff and we should have beat Bangladesh. And I, I remember getting a bit annoyed at that. We played crap against the All-Stars and the West Indies. We put up a good fight. So we, we had, you know, we were playing some nice stuff, but nobody was in form. Nobody was But to be fair, though, also, out. Gav, if you remember, like, there was no, there was no, like, one, there was no form. And that probably is a reflection on the batting order because we kept mm. chopping and changing. Yeah, we, we didn't know what... opened. Fraser opened, Madge opened. So I think there was a lot of chopping and changing from, from that perspective. 100%. Yeah, I can remember because I was racking my brains on the night and I was just thinking, where's anyone going to bat? We just want somebody to just get some runs. And as ironically, we played against New Zealand and it was, we just clicked because of the no fear hitting. But obviously the build-up to it was, it was only marred. By, oh, and then we played England, didn't we? We had a really good yeah, game, day-night game against England. Yeah. We, we played really well. I remember us batting well. We got 130, 140, could have got more. They just had this bowling around the wicket wide. It was, we didn't know what to do yeah, at the end. Yeah. Yeah. We, could have, be, we could have easily yeah, got do you, 160. Do you remember, I don't know whether you're going to get onto it, but do you remember when Kevin Peterson was batting that game? Well, uh, he hit it over the top of the stand. Well, hold on, I mean, hold on. Rhino was bowling something like this. And right, and Kevin Peterson nearly hit him out. Of okay, the- I, I remember Kyle, the sound of Kyle. that ball. It was like he hit a, it was like he'd hit a tailor made driver. Yeah, 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 you see, you see, this is like this is like this is like the media, right? It was the biggest six ever at Trent Bridge. Totally get that. And the ball actually came back to me. Do you remember hit the thing? And that started laughing. <laughs> it and came I, back I, over the crowd. Didn't it? I had to go and pick the ball up because it hit the it hit the near the clock and then it bounced back off into the circle. And I went to go and pick it up almost near the umpire. But the oh, two balls God. before that, he was plum, LBW, trying to slog with me around the wicket, and he was stone dead plum, not given, and that would have changed the game. Yeah, I mean, but... we, were, we were competing, weren't we? We were well in the game. I mean, he obviously just took it away from us at the end, but we were really in it. And But obviously, I suppose the point we're probably going to get to was two days before, <coughs> when obviously the worms, the incident we're blaming. So that, um, yeah, and we won't go too much into it, but it's uh, that... To hit, dented us quite hard, didn't it, Rhino? It was, it was, and it yeah. was a real sort of a fucking hell. Now what? You know, because Blaney was the spearhead of our attack. He was the only one with a bit of pace. Nella was bowling okay, but he wasn't quite. He's probably his quickest. So he was the only one that could have yeah. gone for a few, but had a bit about it. But so it was ironic take, because that, that Wormsley pitch, it probably didn't suit Blaney, but it suited our attack perfectly. Um, so in terms of, yeah, you know, exactly. Dudley Dobley's lack of pace because the wicket didn't have a huge amount of pace. Nice size. And actually, that's why we should have beaten Bangladesh. But, yeah, I remember, obviously, pace on was easier for Bangladesh, but you were keen to give him some overs, get him some form. But, yeah, yeah. It, it did hit us because I think at the oval, that had pace, that had bounce. Exactly. Bigger. But, you know, Blaney had wicket-taking ability, and that's what we needed Absolutely. up front. And in, 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 in sort of in hindsight, him against New Zealand when they needed 12 <laughs> and over, you know, he, he's either going to go for a few, it's going to make a difference. But... Yeah, look, it, he he just genuinely disagreed with the way I went about things, and I looked back at it and said I was probably a little bit harsh. But um, he disagreed. He texted me on the on the coach saying I'm going home. I thought he was joking. Then we met in the in the in the reception at the hotel, and he said I'm going home. We had a little bit of a 
I thought he was joking still, and then we had a bit of an argument, and then I went. I think I remember coming to sit with you, Rhino, for dinner. Yeah. I was just thinking, I can't even eat. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> We're starting the World Cup in three days' time. Who you should I phone? Collar. Who should I phone? So, and yeah. then I, I think we brought. Um, I think Cal came in. Cal McLeod came in, didn't he? Is that what? Because I'm I'm trying to remember because my my recollection of the build up, like, I wasn't involved in any of that build up. You guys had all this fun, and um, before I even joined the joined the joined the crew and. Um, I remember I was playing a championship game up at Durham, and then I was I, I joined literally a day or two before the tournament started. And when I arrived, Laney was walking the other way. I didn't know what had happened. <laughs> I was like, where, "Where's he going?" Um, so I had no understanding of what was going on there. Um, yeah, and uh, it was it was a tricky time. And then the press wanted to know about it, and then they started asking about it at the toss of the England game, and he. You know, it was just uh it was just did, it was anybody, just a, did a anybody trick actually apart from you, because you were obviously not Mr. Popular at the time, Gav, when it came to when it came to Blaney, he'd obviously had a disagreement with you. Did nobody else in the camp try now I know Blaney, I know, I, 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 know he, I know he does I know what he's like when he when he does blow up, he's a, he's, a, he's an emotional guy, but did nobody try to pull him aside and, and try and bring it in and get things so that I think know, I think Maka tried to have a word yeah, with him. Maka but, but I don't think it was very, it just all happened within 15 minutes, Shaky. It was all just that was it. And he was in his room and he was packing and he was off. So it wasn't as if I don't think we even told uh, Pete, I don't think we even told the coach. And uh, uh, sorry, and just we, it, that was it. Just Flat, rough, it was done and dusted. Deal rough, with it. Rough cup of training the next day, and there's, there's someone else there. No, oh, Pete, we just changed the score. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was just, a, to just to touch well, on Gav, that. Gav, was Pete not with you though? I, I, listen, it's, 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 no, it's, no, it's, no, Pete wasn't there. No, no. It just made it. but it's a tough situation for anyone, and and yeah, and the pressure of pre-tournament and things like that. So it's not a it, yeah. Actually, it was an awful was moment a, for everyone. It was actually a double blow, wasn't it? Because didn't Nella break his finger on a absolute minefield of a yeah. We 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 decided to do some fielding practice on a minefield, and it was bobbling all over. And Nella broke his finger, didn't he? And when um, was that? When was that? Then was that before as well the tournament? Yeah. Yeah. You lost, <laughs> you lost your two. I mean, yeah, no two wonder, strike bowlers. We had a very dibbly dobbly attack in that World Cup. I mean, you, uh, do you know what? I've got, I've got yeah, it right here. Righty, righty, I think at half a groin, he was right. Yeah, he was injured. Um, and and Jan Stander was our opening bowler. Oh my, that's not quite. I mean, yeah, Drummo drum as well. Drummo was mixing in there. Drummo, yeah. Yeah, Drummo, you know, he's, he, he obviously sped things up. He was he was low 70s. So he, <laughs> he gave us the X factor. Um, we thought we were going to see you off your long run up again, Rhino. Yeah, no, that was. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was strange, strange proceedings. But like you said, the, the the game against England, I thought we actually played, you know, decent cricket. And then... uh, uh, yeah, I agree. I thought we did some nice stuff at Wormsley and the, the game against England. We we had really we had sort of semi decent hopes going into it. I really, but like I said, still no plan, still no batting order. Still no plans with the ball. We we're just we we're just playing cricket. That's all we were doing. It seems like up until two thousand and nine, we hadn't really started even understanding <laughs> the importance of T Twenty cricket um, and the opportunities that were in that. And we were probably just wing. Sound like I'm not saying we were winging it. We were obviously practicing and training and being prepared as we could. But there wasn't a lot. That we, but then a lot of the other teams were in a similar boat. But I guess they've got a lot. You know, when it comes to the Test playing nations and whatnot, they would have had. Yeah specialist coaching and everything else coming in and different different sessions taking place whereas we don't get that <laughs> amount of time to prepare. No, absolutely. And but also like yeah, sorry, sorry carry on. Get us. Go on, go on, well, yeah, there was if you think about it, I mean there was, you know, there's now case people who specialise in power hitting and things like that. I remember we had some good hitting sessions um and, and things. But even if you think about it, <laughs> the highlight for me was the two pro star bats. Do you remember the bats that turned up for, for Nelly? <laughs> Nelly and Barrow and Barrow Barrow was smoking at every session and he took this pro star bat. And the ball wasn't even getting out the net. So, you know, that, I suppose. <laughs> but that was the other thing. Do you remember, right? We got we got a World Cup kit and it was horrendous, wasn't it? <laughs> it was just coming in different sizes. I had, I had large and it was like, it would fit three of us. And I was just, everyone was chanting about it. Blaney had gone home. I'm just thinking, yeah. oh, you know, just come on. Colin Smith it. decided he was going to wear a, um, he was going to wear a, a baseball helmet. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrendous kit, I remember. You wouldn't give it to an under 11 team, let alone a World oh, Cup yeah. side. Oh, dear. It was embarrassing. But so, just on that, so just, just the, the balance, Shaky, is that 
it, just like Zimbabwe, like 2005 when they qualified, we had a settled team. We had teams where lads just knew what they were doing. We never had that in T20 stuff. We had lads who know whether they were batting in 50 over cricket and it just came naturally, but the T20 were miles away at that yeah. time. Okay, so Kyle, yours so far, even your, your qualification <laughs> process sounds the sounds like, you know, you know, by 2016, we were kind of finding finding our feet. We knew how important T20 cricket was by then. So how were your preparations going into the actual tournament? Yeah, so we... Um... We, we went to India beforehand uh, and spent I can't remember how long it was actually but it was it was it was long enough you know we had we had some some decent prep I can't remember exactly what we had before that um, but you know the India trip we we went there and uh, got a couple, you know a good training camp in really uh, we played against some good sides uh, we, we played some good cricket and we were we were chasing scores of like 200 in games uh, as well as getting hit for 200 but um we played some good games and won some some uh won some tight games actually uh, and one of the one of the earliest memories actually that when we got out there for, for some reason we decided because we we're playing a few games under lights uh in the in the world cup we decided we'd do some wet ball training so the outcome's like an esky full of water and there's simon smith carrying it out so there's there's uh, I'm assuming Grant Bradburn and, on one side and Craig Wright on the other. Uh, uh, must have been Wrighty, yeah, I think it was. Uh, anyway, no, Toby, or one of them anyway. So Simon Smith's in the middle and he's dunking his balls in, in a, a esky and throwing it to each person who's hitting out catches. So there must be like, come on, there must be like five to ten yards separating the two hitters. And these boys are picking them up and they're just getting wetter and wetter and the throws are starting to go like this. And Ali Evans um, maybe wasn't having one of his better days. He was a little frustrated that they kept dunking him in water. It was like, ah, oh, what's this all about? Picks it up and he just wings it and it comes out. And Simon Smith is on his knees dunking these balls in and it, and it literally... <laughs> It skims the top of his head here and leaves an indent like what you'd see off a pitch, you know, a wet pitch. They take a little indent out of it. Oh. And uh, that was the start of our trip. And, and we didn't have any more white balls after that. So um, it, was, it, was a, it was a good training camp, but uh, the bowlers had got no assistance from, from the cricket balls. But we had, uh, we had a good, good prep leading into it. Um, what kind of teams did you play against? Were they just local, like first, what, the domestic teams or...? What? Who? Who were the teams? I, th I think they were just like like select select teams. Uh, I can't remember exactly who they who they were, but you know, we I th I'm pretty sure we would have gone through like a an agency that helps organise camps, cricket camps, and stuff like that. And who that was, I can't. I, I don't know. I wasn't involved in that, but um, yeah, they pulled together some good teams, and uh, um, yeah, it just turned out to be a good prep. You know, using you know conditions that within the country and stuff like that. And then we went to actually joined the World Cup phase and there's always a, a warm-up game or two. And uh, I can remember one against Oman and uh, Mohali, I think, uh, but I can't remember what else we had in that. But we did have a couple of World Cup prep games um, before going into the tournament. So, so our prep that, was good. Our prep you was compare good. that with um, the two previous captains, there's a big difference there already. I mean, boys going out to India, to focus on T20 cricket, that's what you were there for. Um, that's the conditions you're going to play in. I don't think there was any of that certainly happening. And I mean, a bounce game, an evening game at the Grange, and you still didn't really know who was who was who was going to, who was going to play. You were waiting for some yeah. players to put their hands up. Um, and then in 2009, it sounds pretty similar. But as time has gone on, you know that sounds like a you know a lot better preparation for for going into a tournament. So. Going into the tournament itself, 2007, Rhino, yeah. um, South Africa, you know, boxed, uh, put in a group with two giants of, of world cricket in Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tell me about the about the feelings going into it. Yeah, so as I said, we, we only had you know one one or two warm up games, and the games hadn't gone terribly, and and we'd started to realise 
good pitches um, and things like that. And then we moved, it was all at the Heinfeld, as you know, we, we played at Centurion and we played at Poch and then we went down to Durban uh, for the two games at, uh, at, at Kingsmead there. So, but again, two teams very well set up. Uh, India probably went on to win it that year, I think. And mm. They played so, the final. They both played yeah. the final. Pakistan almost got over the line. And Yeah, so those, those are the two finalists. And, and, yeah, but even if, just the way it was at the moment, I, I wouldn't say they were, like, no teams were out and out T20 specialists and they weren't picking things. They were just two cricket teams who had awesome batting power and bowling. And it's the bowling of Pakistan, I think, that separated yeah. them from lots of mystery and lots of spin, yeah. And uh, and they, you know, so they went on to be the finalists. So a tough group. It seemed we always got stuck in a bit of a tough group, same as in the, in the, in the 50 Cup. But unfortunately, we played against Pakistan at... Um, at Kingsmead, and you know, we we, we we batted first, didn't get a great score, and the no, game. We was... did it. No, we did it, Ryan. Oh, we no, we didn't. We 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 bowled we bowled first. Bowled first. We actually, bowled yeah. very well. We uh, did. Yes. Um, Sorry, my mistake. We did. No, right. I'm here to I'm here to keep. Yeah, you keep right. me right, shaky. The my memory's um, against so, it. Yeah, we 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 bowled first. We made a change. Now, there's a couple of things as well leading into that yeah, game. Uh, Ross Lyons was selected. And he was, and I remember him. Poor guy walked by me in the morning. He was the first guy in the bus, and Andy Tennant came running down the running down out the lift, and he said, said um, "Has anyone seen Ross Lyons?" Uh, no, he's on the bus, and he was obviously obviously informed that Righty was brought back in because you'd watched Shane Bond bowl on it earlier that day, and he looked all right. So Righty was the perfect choice. Yeah, yeah. Was, was, was Andy coached then? And he uh, was interim coach, yeah, for that particular tournament. So, like I said, we were kind of between, yes, he was. So, Who else was with him? Was it Pete with him? Yeah, Pete. Pete yeah. was out as assistant coach, yeah. Yeah. If you remember, we did have the advantage of watching the team in the morning. And Kingsmead is probably the most SEMA friendly wickets in all mm. of South African, mm. South African cricket. Um, and, and yes, yeah, Grady came in. I do remember that now in that conversation in the morning. So, you're spot on. Um, came in and 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 played so you have to have a few because i really i think ross Lyons is a really really brilliant t20 spinner i mean i, I you know come back to the chat later on he's, he's probably going to be close to you know so it's a big call and he had bowled well in the warm-ups too so it just a you had to have you actually had to have quite a few tough conversations in that one because you had to leave out four players, four that were players yeah. i wanted to kill you I'd already told all my family in Pakistan that I think I'm going to play against Pakistan, and when you're when you told me, I was uh, I, I won't choose all the. I've been, look, been looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, so, so what had happened yeah. was I just need I need to get this out there so we could just go for it. Throw it out there, Shaky. Right. Throw it out. So we got we got to the we got to the World Cup, and Andy Tennant and Pete Steindl sat us all down. Now obviously all the big guns were on this on this World Cup. Dougie Brown was there, Gav was there. You know you still had Colin Smith. Um, yourself, obviously, Navi was there as well. A yeah. uh, lot, lot, you know, star studded team, but Andy Tennant and Pete Steindl, who probably were not big names themselves, being in the coaching role, had said, Listen, this is not about reputation, it's not about anything. If you perform, you're going to play. So you, everybody's going to get to play the two warm up games, and we're going to select the team off of that. So I didn't get, I think we played, we played Bangladesh first, I didn't play in that game. Um, and then I played against Zimbabwe. And we were just about to lose a wicket. Don't know if you remember this, Gav, but we were struggling a bit. Ryan had started off really well, but Zimbabwe had pulled us back a bit. And I was due to go in next. Um, and Gav, had, you know, he was getting itchy. He was wanting to get out there. And, he, and he'd said, do you, want, do, you want, do you want me to go in? And I remember Andy Tennant had turned around and said, no, no, we'll stick, we'll stick with the order. So I went in, did all right, walked off. And I remember Crocky coming up to me, Few, one or two of the other boys pat in the back, you're going to play against Pakistan. And I literally ran with that. So I went home to the hotel, told all my cousins in Pakistan, my uncle, everything. And then I had to, to come down and have the, the chat with you. And we went a little bit toe-to-toe -to -toe because I questioned it. And I said, well, you said if you performed. The sure thing was, you know, we've got a lot of experienced guys here. Uh, but yeah, it was a tough conversation. I don't hold it against you. I wouldn't wish those type of conversations on anybody. No, not easy. But... You had to do that four times. Can you at least tell me that I was the worst of them? 
you, you were the worst or the hardest choice out of all them. Yeah, no, 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 maybe not the hard, hardest choice, but did I give you the hardest time? I would say so, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, uh, you know what? I, maybe I've just got a good memory of blanking things out, but yeah, I, I do. <laughs> but you probably, I'm trying to remember the conversation. I mean, Ross would have been a really tough one. I mean, that's... Well, Ross was already picked, and I remember Ross, Wrighty that night. Personally, I think Wrighty came to your room and had a word with you and said... You better and get me back in the And he shoe on himself in. I don't remember that. But no, I, I don't remember that. Let's um, go with that because it's funny. Right, he, right, he would have been a harder conversation than your shaky, so, so don't worry about he that. He was raging. He was raging yeah. the night before the game. He was, yeah. you know, I see the doggy in the background looking very cute. <laughs> he didn't do it. Um, yeah, right, he would have been, a, he was raging. I remember the night of the, he was he was angry. So that would have been tough. Who else? So me, right, who are the other two? Would Dougie have been in the squad, Dougie? Dougie played. Dougie played. Played. Who else did we leave out? Ross obviously ended up being left out, but... Yeah, for right yeah. So yeah. there's still two more. Did Maka play? Maka played. Yeah. Uh, Fraggle, was Fraggle on that trip? Fraggle opened the batting and did, did very well. I did, yeah. Fraggle did well. Fraggle, yeah, yeah. Who, uh, it's not. It's not. Come, it might come. Might come to our head. Head later. But yeah, all these years later, Ryan. That's. That's always been a. It was more the fact that I told all the family, but that was a schoolboy error on my part. But yeah. No, definitely not a schoolboy error. Shaky. Listen, it, it. None of those conversations are easy. You know what it's like. You're all. You're all in the squad for a reason, and everyone's. You know. You know. Will 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 argue that they and and rightly so that they should merit a place. So, I don't know. It's a bloody and Gav will tell you. It's a. It's a. It's, it's it's a cut job. It's easier when they say I'm going home early and and you've only got fourteen to pick from. So maybe yeah, I, I, wanted, I wanted I wanted three more to go, and then it was easier. <laughs> we'll go, in, we'll go into the go into the Pakistan game. Yeah, we we'll bowl bowl first, and we yeah. bowl, bowl bloody well. I mean, Blaney and uh, and Nelly opened up, gave you yeah. the firepower that you needed, mm. and we had we had Pakistan. Righty obviously came back into the team, did well as well. But talk me about hey, two things. Yeah, so again, yeah, I think they did but I mean, like I said, I do I do think, right, in hindsight, and I don't know, we probably, Ross Lyons got, got left out and things like that, but I do remember it actually, um, you know, it, it, it did help the Seamers, um, you know, to a degree. And so I, I don't think that was a terrible call, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just I suppose they just, they, they obviously had, um, you know, they had quite a bit of firepower and things like that. And, and we did get off to a good start, but then they kind of, Trying to think, was it Mal? No, who who you was it? Up a scorecard. I'm here. Don't worry, I can help you. Right. Can help. Give me a hand. Someone, someone took the game away from us. Last sort so of basically, five. yeah, right Nesha, under. Refresh your memory. We had them in trouble at four or five down, and I, I, actually, there was one plan that I remember that I give you credit for. Don't know whose idea it was, but Gav got put out on the deep point boundary to Imran Nazir. Yes. Um, which which when you look back in hindsight was very smart, and he he put one straight down. He put one straight to Gav, if I remember correctly, that deep point. Gav caught it. Thankfully, yeah. after, you know, Gav can be prone to drop a few on the boundary. No, line. no, always good under the, the right but thing. Not, but it, not it, that it, one. It was oh. a free D. But the yeah. game changed when a free D came in. Yes. And you and basically, from what I remember, I think it might have been I heard that Blaney had said to Madge, toss the first one up. <laughs> yeah. And I think, Madge, I think Madge did. And... The first one went for six over long on. And from that moment, the game changed. Yeah, because because if you think about it, I'm just looking there at the figures and actually, you know, to, to write his credit coming quite late, three for 29. Yeah, or four, well. so, and, and, and like you said, Blaney and Nelly I, bowled really, really well up front. Dougie Brown was expensive for us, which is unusual for Doug. And Madge went for, got a couple of wickets, but went for 49 or four. So, yeah, it, but you're right. Yeah, tossing it up wasn't the, the best shot, but... He was by far like I know nowadays a lot of T Twenty cricketers hit the ball, you know, incredible distances and come in from ball one and 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 do that. But I, you know, he, he, he what are you twenty two of seven balls that that at, at time, you know, that wasn't that common that someone just came in and with devastating effect yeah. whacked it from ball one. So he kind of flipped the game a little bit on its head um, for me. Because, um, because just looking at the scoreboard, just trying to refresh myself, you know. All the big boys up top, you, you, we knocked, we knocked, we knocked them over fairly, fairly well. 
and then I, I think, think I, I think I, I think <coughs> I caught I caught him on six or eight or something and trod on the boundary. I'm sure I caught the ball and fell over the boundary or something. Something I stupid. I, I, really? Yeah, I'm guaranteed. I probably <coughs> messed it up at some stage. <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, so again, but he, he just took the game away, and that was the first time I think. You know, you, you'd had a couple of instances where you'd seen, you know, power hitting, but you know, he probably set the tone there for a, you know, for a finisher and just come and change the innings, you know, in a heartbeat. And he, he definitely if you look, did that. If you, look at the, if you look at the World Cup that that Gav Gav and Kyle played in, the next one that we'll go on to, <coughs> he pretty much single handedly won them the semi final and the final. Correct. Um, to, yeah. to, to, to take the so you, you know, he has, he's 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 a phenomenal. And that kind of game, I don't think Afridi really had to think too much about T20, did he? That was probably just right <laughs> no, up the street. No, no, he was. He was he's the, when it got, when it he's got the tailor made for it. Yeah, leg spinning. He doesn't turn a match balls wicket to wicket at good pace, and then whacks it out of parks. Now he is. He was definitely the first tailor made for. It'd be scary to think what he would be going for in terms of IPL contracts and mm. things like that in 2007. You know, if you if you if you related his things back to now, you know. So, he, he, soon, he soon retired from Test cricket, didn't he? When T Twenty came in, that was that. Yeah, Dad, he, could, he could get away quick enough. Can I remember it, Lord? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm getting off. I'm getting off. Wow, the field for two got, days. They got about one sixty odd, uh, Ryan. One seventy. Yeah, they got one seventy odd, shaky. And and like I said, probably, probably twenty or thirty more than than probably we 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 deserved and bowled to. So just that we burst from him took it away from us a little bit. So um yeah just a bit tricky then going in. You know we started well though we started well Fraggle yeah. opened up and, and came out came out really well. I think he got don't know if he got 50, 40 or at least yeah uh, 46 and but he did start well but he just didn't have any support. I, I got up fairly early sort of sat back on one and, and lobbed it to Gully. I don't think Navi got many. Gav got a couple, and then Maka. So he started really well, but but just mm. no support all around him. And then until sort of Madge came in later on, and, and the game Ryan was team. kind of gone by then. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. that we were. What did we finish on? He only got 120 odd, 130 odd um, in the end. But but it was actually the, the bowlers at the end. I remember who we got 120. We did, um, and and the bowlers sort of gave us a little bit of credibility. But Fraggle got. 46 or 47 up top. He was excellent. Um, really good. It just makes you think if we'd shaved 20 off of them. Which, yeah. And, uh, and you know, we again, it's, it's fine margins at that Small level. Margins, yeah, and, and battered. Yeah, better. And you, 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 you don't know what we're looking at. But, yeah, no, it was a... It was a... And just looking at the team just on there, you know, we... <laughs> probably, you know, a lot of depth and things like that in terms of the batting. Smithy at seven, Madge at eight. But, but the lineup's quite... Samey, samey, isn't it? There's not really, you know, there's not like if you look at the current Scotland T20 side, you know, the guys yeah. you know, onto that, but there's some proper specialists who just come out and, and whack it. But we're all, you know, as, as a batting group, you know, in terms of strike rates and in terms of, you know, the way they hit and things like that, quite, quite samey, samey all the way down. So, unfortunately, then I know, then we got wet. Due to have a box office night. Um, day and night game in front of a sold out crowd. Yeah. At, uh, at Durban and it and it and it rained and it rained and it rained. And it rained and it rained. We never actually got into team selection chats. I don't think did we? Shay? I may have played that. Yeah, I think you were definitely in. I've had you down. I've just, <laughs> I've just checked. No Chad. No Chad. I've, I've just checked the notes from the game, and you were definitely in. So. Right. Well done. Well done. Um, yeah, you must have been must have been gutted, mate. You know, chance to play. Box, you know, big, 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 big game. Yeah, that's the the that's the disappointment of the T Twenty stuff. You only have two games, especially in Durban. It, it monsoons all the. Once it rains, it doesn't stop there, does it? Mm -hmm. it's, um, and it obviously, yeah, with the Indian community in uh, in in Durban. Oh my God, it, right. it was massive. It was massive, and I remember it was pouring down, and there were still people piling in. They were never going right. to play. There was people outside just obviously wanting to get a glimpse and. I remember us. What did we go watch the game before, or did did we go and watch a game? I can't remember what it was. Um, maybe the game, or maybe it's the next night or something. But uh, yeah, really disappointed because it, they were a class act. They just looked good. They just 
I think Youth Raj was probably at his best in those yeah, days. Yeah, Youth Raj. Do, do, Donny was, was just coming. Donny was flying. Um, oh, that's there were, there were the World Cup as well. The Youth Raj hit broad for the six sixes. So yeah. Yeah. At, at Durban, yeah. At Durban, um, that's right. But yeah, I still think, you know, as Ryan says, we, we weren't. We just had a samey, samey team, but we competed. You know, he just, he just felt we had, you know, we were just a couple, 10 minutes out of the game yeah. that would have changed it. We would have competed. We were never yeah. sort of murdered. You know, I, I, one thing I always remember about our World Cup experiences, we're never embarrassing. You know, we never, yeah. never got smashed out of the park. Oh, actually, at the over, we had a bit of a pace thing. But we were, um, yeah, we always competed. And, you know, you never know. That was the thing. Especially in day night games, at the yeah, Durban. day night games, but it seems around there. And 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 if I remember correctly, I mean, Blaney and Nelly were bowling, even yeah. the warm ups, everything. They were yeah. Blaney. That was probably Blaney at his, you know, in terms, in terms of T Twenty and his bowling. For us, I, I remember that era, two thousand and seven. It's probably at his bowling peak because he bowled really well in Kenya before then. Um, yeah. He was, yeah, he was bowling bowling really well at that time. And and Nelly yeah. was swinging the white ball up front. Yeah. You know, yeah. Even if you look at it's nicely. He was shaping the ball beautifully. So, you know, under yeah. lights on, on that pitch and swinging ball, you know, you, you never know against them. But exactly. yes, it, it, it's just a pity we, because that's probably, I don't, I mean, we played in front of a sellout at the Oval against uh, New Zealand because it was a it was a sellout for the following yeah. game. They were playing Pakistan. West Indies. But yeah, for, no, it was, was it Pakistan? I thought it was Australia, West Indies. But we played in front of a big crowd there. But that's obviously a bigger capacity at Kingsmead. Yeah. And the noise that probably would have been for most of the guys the biggest crowd we would have probably all played in front of. Yeah, easily, easily. Yeah, it certainly, was, atmosphere wise, definitely. It was a shame, but but brilliant tournament. It was, I mean, uh, just to be out there experiencing that and being, you know, we got to go to the ICC awards. That yeah, we did. that was a great night. Yep, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a good night. Um, I'm still, I still could, and I still couldn't believe it because I was sat next to Gav and the Indian team were sitting in front of us. And Yuvraj Singh turned around to Gav and was like, how's it going, Gav? Yeah. How's Max? And I was like, bloody yeah. hell, Gav, you're big time, mate. You know, <laughs> you, know all the big, you know all the big boys here. And just just, just, just on that, I, I, I'm always on it, Gav. He's, he's, he, needs to, he needs to deliver. I'm, I'm pushing him for some of the big names. He's keeping them he's keeping them tight. He's had a baby and stuff, so I have to give him <laughs> But uh, I think <laughs> Yuvraj came on the night out of us, didn't they? That's, that's right. That's right. He went. He went out. Went out that night with you. Um, but look, it was it was great to to be around and, and rub shoulders with some some of these people. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, it was a short short lived tournament. Um, as we came back, but good to get that first first experience. Good that we qualified. Better to be there than not be there. Correct. Um, well, I suppose it was just you know in considering considering it had a spate of, of non qualifications, not playing to play two World Cups in the space of. Well, six months, five months, that was pretty good exposure. And it, and it gave that sort of core group of players that were going to sort of take on the mantle really good exposure for mm. the next four or five years to then, you know, once you've got the taste, I think that then spurs people <clears> on to say, we, we, we're going to qualify for this more regularly. So hopefully that little error set the tone for what was to come in terms of the Kyle stuff and things like that to come. So, because that 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 from from the qualifier in Kenya, I'd say probably from two thousand and five. Then from Kenya, that five years it was relentless cricket, wasn't it? And we had qualified yeah, nearly every other year. Then went to South and Africa probably, straight after. Even probably the, started after two thousand and four, just in terms of the cricket and the spell. Yeah. You know, we had that. We obviously had that little spell, that tournament, ICC trophy, and then yeah. we won in Sharjah. And just Champions, that spell the Champions today, trophy, yeah, of course. Two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten mm-hmm. was 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 a lot of cricket, and a lot of people got. A lot of required exposure, you know, Kyle, yeah. Barrow, all of those guys coming through in the next era. I think. It was yeah. For them. So moving on, two thousand and nine. So we've talked about a bit of the preparation. We've touched on, you know, a couple of warm up games. We've touched on the fact that the squad, you know, what a big big player um, mm-hmm. left the tournament, and obviously that had an impact because you you know you were probably quite dependent on him. Um, to, to lead the attack, uh, Kyle Kutzer, big fish, comes in a day before the tournament. Lastminute.com, you know, don't know what that was all about. Team management should have been having a word there. Um, uh, how are you feeling going into the into the first game? Was it was it South Africa that we played first? Yeah, no, New Zealand first. But we 
we saw obviously we played England at Trent Bridge, played all right, and then we I think we came down to the Oval and played uh, Holland in yeah. another warm up game. But I think that's when Ryan was talking about Pakistan were playing India following, and the crowd was just piling in, or yes. we were coming to watch Scotland Holland. But it was three quarters full. It was a tremendous atmosphere. And I, did, I don't think we played very well. And I've still got back to, we, we still, nobody was scoring any runs. I don't think anybody had actually no. got 30 or something just to sort of stand out or somebody was actually looking like they could sort of just bat wherever they wanted. So that I think I remember I dropped you, didn't I, Ryan, for the Holland game? Well, I was just about to say, Shaky, don't feel too bad. <laughs> My first time ever dropped for Scotland was, was that game. So I understand how you felt, Shaky. I've it, it was I, awful. I, I, Oh, it was well, awful. I, yeah, I didn't brutal. sleep that night. Yeah, I didn't sure. sleep. I, I, no, I, did, I hated it. And then the next game against New Zealand, I think I dropped righty. So Rhino, I played together. We played together for donkey. No, righty, righty played. Um, we dropped stupidly, Madge against New Zealand. It might have been South Africa dropped righty. So one or the other. Um, yeah. It was just two horrendous sounds like conversations. You, sounds like sounds like you were having kittens, Hammy. Sounds like oh, you, it was just it was awful. But sounds like you know, it was do you know what? Stressful, the whole, stressful, stressful time. I just wanted somebody to get some runs, honestly, Shake. I just wanted three people just to look like they were in Nick, just look like. And obviously, when, when, but as it turned out, because it was such a short in game, I think it was eight or nine overs against New Zealand. Seven. The, seven, the shackles are off. The yeah. selection didn't matter. We just picked all the lads we know could give it a touch and just swing from your ass. That, that was exactly what happened. We, and we it was did just probably, Gav, in hindsight, make the biggest selection mistake leaving Madge out that game just oh, in absolutely of, in hindsight with, I mean I remember, I remember. We, went, we went for batters but thinking about it seven overs of, of you didn't need you know eight batters and he could bat a bit himself but when you thought absolutely. about it it was you're thinking seven over game spinner but then when you think about the, the boundary dimensions to that left side oh it's huge wasn't it because I remember yeah so anyway we we got we got 890 18, 19, yeah, maybe 12 and over, didn't they? We, we got 19. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle got, Kyle got, you got a few. Kyle, you've not spoken for a while, so you, you came out, you came into that, you arrived, you brought your, you, you graced us with your presence from Durham and you turned up for the World Cup. Um, yeah. one, was one, one big dog was leaving, but another big dog was arriving and straight in, straight into the, straight into the swing of things. Did you get, what did you make against the Kiwis? Uh, I, I got a quick 30 or something, I think. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I don't know if you've got the scorecard up, but I just remember it being crash, bang, wallop. You know, it was all all happening in a hurry. But I think, I mean, I wasn't part of any of those selection chats, but I do remember it sort of being quite rushed because we were tucked away in, uh, downstairs in the indoor school almost. Yeah. yeah. Where that yeah. Exactly in the Oval. And, and someone smacked one through. Maybe that was a New Zealand game. But anyway... The, um, yeah, that that was a New Zealand game, and one of Baz McCullum or someone was practicing and smacked one through the net, and didn't didn't it come into our dressing room and whack one of the guys? Uh, something and, like that, yeah. And, yeah. yeah, something like that. But 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 yeah, I just remember it being a a, a big rush. You know, all of a sudden we're playing because we didn't think we were going to play. I don't think, and all of a sudden it happened, mm. and the ground staff got things in order, and then right, we're on in half an hour, and it was just like it was a, it was a bit of a, a bit of a rush, you know. Yeah, I mean, I remember we had selection. We were just got probably going to the orthodox team. And then all of a sudden, we just thought, all right, everyone's in. All the guys who we know can clear a boundary are going to play. And Ryan's absolutely right. We didn't think about the bowlers. Um, because we obviously, when we batted first, we just set such a good target in my eyes. And we just genuinely thought we had a real sniff at this. Um, and I always remember saying to the bowlers, look, I don't care. Just flipping, get it full and straight. You've got two overs or one or two overs, you get it full and straight. We could set straight fields. And I remember it from, from ball one, it just went pear-shaped. We were bowling no balls wide. And uh, they, they, were, they were never in any trouble at any stage. They were just, they were just had, I think they knocked it off in five and a half overs. But then in hindsight, like I said, Ryan mentioned the spinners. So I remember bringing Ryan a one for the last over. And he went uh, for I bought, didn't you? No, I bought the fourth. I bought the fourth and went for bloody four runs. Yeah, four yeah runs. but no. by, then, by then it was gone. That was the stupid thing. <laughs> yeah, because so you came maybe, on and bowled brilliantly. Had maybe Magia in there, um, alongside Ryan, and, and maybe that maybe the way to, the, the way to go was to slow up because your bowling attack was quite slow as it was. There wasn't very same really old. Had yeah. Any pace in there. yeah, the big challenge we had was it, the dimensions of the pitch were there was such a short boundary to one mm. side and a massive boundary to the other. And I remember 
you know, so you could bowl, you know, pretty straight. And, and it was a big hit to go that way, wasn't it? To go mm. sort of to the car corner space. But yeah. I remember all our bowlers just probably bowled <laughs> half yeah. volley outside off. And uh, and it was McCallum's strength is outside off. And he just sort of carved us over cover. I'll be interested to see how many free hits there were in that as well. I remember, I think Jan, Jan Standerbolt three four no balls were free hits. <laughs> Are you just That's thinking? Never know in that situation. That's yeah, it's terrible. difficult. It's difficult. Yeah. But that, yeah, okay. that well, three three no balls, so three free hits, three no balls. Yeah, it just, just um, but I remember that day. That that was probably the saddest day in my Scottish international career. That, that was our biggest opportunity. Yeah. And we could have qualified. Uh, I win would have qualified. I thought you were going to. I thought you were going to get over the line. Yeah. But it was just yeah. the they chased it, which made it made it even worse. But they won with an over a spare in the end, Cass. So. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, know, even, it wasn't even a contest. And I think but, I mentioned to you last time, Shaker, is that look, I, I, my my own admission, I wasn't a great captain, but I always wanted to install. Ryan will probably think the same. I always we always had this in us that we could potentially not hold up to the big boys. We always had this sort of, didn't have this big belief that we had. And that just shined in our bowling performance that game. We just go into our shells. And I just thought of all the things we want to get out of this is to stand up to the big boys. And that yeah. was our occasion to do it. I always remember it. Um, but and then obviously we played South Africa the next day, I think, or two days later, one or the other. I think it might have been the next day. I think yeah, a couple of lads were late for the, late for the bus. And you yeah. just think... I don't know. I can't remember the top notes. Somebody forgot their pass or something. And we just had a big chat the night before about preparation. And that's when I lost all interest in team talks because people just do not listen ever. <laughs> someone, someone, someone couldn't find their white zip up top. That's probably what it was. That horrific white zip up. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, was going to say Monty, Monty Bickbar wasn't on that trip, but I mean, he would be the first name that I would throw out there. World Cup qualifiers. We, Went in South Africa. It got to the point where he just you just couldn't get him to rock up for the bus. Yeah, and no, he wasn't good at being on time. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, so then, then I think it was the very next day we're playing South Africa on a great day at the Oval, probably three quarters full. I think nice weather, brilliant pitch. Um, great pitch. Think, yeah, brilliant pitch. We we thought I think I think we might have won the toss and stuck them in just because we probably wanted a game. Um, but I, I genuinely think we're so disheartened from the New Zealand game. Yeah. I, I really do. I think we they're not the the wind out of our sails. So it was just a matter of look, let's just put in a semi decent performance. And I think but do you really remember uh, we we had a beer with um, Mola Andy Moles afterwards in the hotel, and he he he, he genuinely that's the most nervous he's ever been mm -hmm. as a coach. I remember so seeing him just, after, yeah. Um, he just thought after our batting performance and, and, and even at the stage during the game, he, he was like, oh my God, because he was, you know, he was, he was a little bit of pressure on Mona at the time. And, and, and I think losing to Scotland might have kind of, but he, he, he just, by his own admission, said that was one of the most nervous he's ever been just after our batting performance. But what I remember, though, is, is you know, you talk about plans and you talk about like T20 and executing slow balls or changing things, right? But I let I remember particularly Yanni, you know, just and our bowlers almost just running back to their mark, you know, just like as quick as they could, just get out of this the situation, mm -hmm. and instead of just you know stopping and just thinking, let's try something, you know, with that big thing in hindsight, you know, you look at the guy's ball, uh, slower balls into the pitch now, bouncer slower balls. You see, you know, you guys execute that Kyle Ades mm -hmm. all day long with that massive boundary on the left hand side. It was just, you know, just a little bit, just a bit more slowness and we just slowed down a bit, I think. Yeah, we would have exactly. won it. But again, I think, like you said, just lack of planning. I think that that was maybe a, a caveat for us to then, because it probably instilled belief in the likes of you, Kyle, and a few other guys coming through that actually we can, we can score the runs against these guys. And then it just worked out that you actually need plans in, in these kind of situations to take it. Well, that was, that was the reason, that was the reason Blaney fell out with me because that's I think I remember at Worsley that was the that got my back up because our bowlers weren't doing it and then obviously he obviously we've had this chat and I said well we can see you remember the results against New Zealand we, we weren't doing it this, this is the reason why we have these conversations um you know but anyway it's hindsight and that's what we had it is. we but came up against a pretty good player that day um probably probably the world's best maybe de Villiers um, oh, yeah. He, he, it, he? He, he must have just, you know, before you even were able to get into the game, he had um, he had already pretty much taken it away from you. 
you remember? Yeah, he, 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 he opened my eyes in terms of we played yeah. a lot of, lots of good players, even at the World Cup, the guys, you know, 50, 20, the 50 over World Cup. But the noise that the, where the came off his bat every time he, he struck the ball and his ability to hit it wherever yeah. he wanted was, you know, was pretty amazing. He, he kind of opened my eyes and, and you knew he yeah. was pretty special at that I point. Agree. Well, that, that, that was the first time, right, as me as well. Obviously, we'd all played a lot of cricket. And that I remember that day like it was yesterday. It was just some. You just think, wow, this is different level. As a this captain, is... Gav, he, he's got to be the hardest to to, to captain against because what mm. can you do? Even if your bowlers execute plans pretty well, he's got the ability to, yeah, exactly. to just hit it where he likes. So. Exactly. I, th I think I think on that, like <coughs> there has to be a stage in in the sort of evolution of Scottish cricket somewhere along there that. You know, you see that, and you under you start to appreciate where that level actually is 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 getting to, and and um, only once you experience that and see it, do you, you know do you actually start to think actually we, we there we're missing out in some some areas here. We need exactly. to we need to we need to think about you know think a little bit more, think outside the box or what what whatever it is, uh, and it's certainly something that you know the game's evolved massively, and, oh, exactly. and you know. I guess not getting heaps of opportunity to play T20 cricket as much as other sides back then. Obviously, we were going to be a little bit behind behind the eight ball, perhaps. And and yeah. and I think, Rhino, you mentioned yeah, there was a, a stage that a lot of the players were similar style of of players, and uh, it's amazing. Well, well, what's changed that? Why why aren't they similar styles of players now? Well, I, or, I think I think you know? what's changed it for me after watching and seeing the involvement of T20 and and maybe a coaching style change. I don't know, but that that game against New Zealand proved to me that in T20 cricket, you you have to play without fear. You you can't actually worry about losing your wicket in T20 cricket. And I think the New Zealand game for me was the proving point of that. So late on in my career, Carl, maybe it's the start of your career, but you literally had nothing to lose. You had seven overs to go out and bat and, and just swing from ball one. And look how we did. We, we only actually lost two or three wickets in the whole chase. And we were, you know, 90 on for, for two or three and seven, seven overs against a, a good bowling attack. So, you know, I, I think from that point on, to be successful in T20 cricket, you actually cannot fear getting out. And, and, and your batting plan has to be, you know, completely built around that philosophy and I, and I still think I still think batters put too much of a prize on their wicket in 2009 whenever it was and and that that shift change came with more IPL cricket and and stuff going along but yeah. I think mindset wise you, you you know even Gav you played against England T20 you would still think about creating an innings or building an innings and actually when I think about mm -hmm. you know two innings is that I my best innings is for Scotland. I, mean, I only got 27 that game, but it was off seven balls. But but you think it was eight, ten balls or whatever. But that game, and then when you play without fear, it's 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 amazing. And then I think that mindset Absolutely. probably happened then. Yeah. Well, no, okay. just to give you a little bit of, you know, a little bit of background, even even after that tournament, you know, maybe then I wasn't necessarily appreciating the mindset and the, the learning that you've taken from it. Uh, and maybe it hadn't clicked as yet, but we, we went on to play a qualifier in, in T20 qualifier that we just missed out by point, whatever it was of a run in, in UAE. And, you know, looking at the way you play cricket now and how big an influence boundary hitting has, uh, yeah. and sides that hit the most boundaries, uh, like it was a really high percent, it's like 85% of the times a side that hits most boundaries wins the game. So it's a really clear indicator that boundaries are key. And, uh, uh, you can get away with maybe one person who, who rotates and gets through the yeah. bats through the middle a little bit, but barely even get through one of those. And we were still, uh, um, as Skipper and you know, dis decisions made with Pete Steindl at the time, we were. I was trying. I was meant to be batting through at three, which was, um, you know, in hindsight, you know, it's not the, not the right thing to do. But even still, after that World Cup uh, for, in, at the Oval, you know, in, in England. It, we're still making those those errors, you know, and we're still yeah. Winning, so. yeah I remember but that I, tournament, the UAE, because we were in Kenya first, and they murdered <laughs> us by ten wickets in two games, and then we played a couple of warm up games, and we were doing exactly the same things. You're right, we just would because we. I remember on the chat in Kenya, and we'd saying, "How are we going to play? You know, we don't gonna are we gonna are we gonna swing from our ass? Are we gonna play the we play?" And I think we all resolved to going back to to the same old, which which did obviously yeah. didn't work. Yeah. 
But I think but, but again, like, again, the the players players we had, um, I think had heaps of abil- ability and skill, and it and it was it was just a, a, a change in mindset that was probably required a, a little bit, and then it was, um, trusting the skills that you did have because players had those skills, uh, certainly had those skills to to play the way the teams are playing now. It was just, uh, wasn't necessarily. It wasn't necessarily okay to play that way, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I, 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 I totally agree. I mean, Gav, you you were the one of the first exponents of of probably the reverse sweep that that we saw within our team. Maka was a standard sweeper, but I, I still think there would have been an element of if you got out playing the reverse sweep, is is that the right call? And nowadays, I mean, Jesus, if you don't play the reverse sweep, you're daft. So yeah. so you know, in terms of our our mentality, you you sort of flipped that and and, and played it like that, but. Yeah, yeah I, I do believe, we, you know, even like you said, that UAE tournament, we still played with that fear, that fear of not qualifying and or the fear of kind of getting out. And, and there was a big onus. I remember the team talks, and you're right, Carl, you, you, even you having played in this new era with, with the guys the last three or four years, you know, we, we, we never talked about boundaries. We always talked about singles, you know, in team talks. And there was always, if you could get, you knew boundaries were a given. And, and you, as long as you, wrote, you know, get a run of ball, it's, you're, you're fine. But I, 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 I'm i in total agreement with you. If, if you can't hit the ball um, over the rope or, or beyond the rope in T20 cricket. I think, I think obviously, through that era, it would be a of us not to sort of touch on is that we were in a massive transition stage in terms of yeah. Scotland cricket, in terms of squads. So from 2007 through to 12, 13, obviously when Carl's yeah. sort of era took over, we, we, were, we were just competing. And when we won a game, it was a real achievement. I mean, we, I think Pete, we had a couple of coaches that came in. Pete had a bit of a tough shift trying to um, uh, look after these guys and the selections. I was retiring. Floppy was retiring. Wrighty retired. Rhino was finishing. We're bringing new blood in. So it was so difficult to, yeah. to all of a sudden go, come on, guys, you're coming in the side. Let's swing from your ass. If you get out, you probably won't play, but good luck, sort of. Yeah, agreed. I mean, it comes down to the selection piece, yeah. And and, and, and what I'd also say is the, the big transition was happening around the batting piece, but bowling mm. even more so. Like, the mm. guys were just sort of coming through now. So you're right. I mean, everything's quite cyclical in sport, isn't it? So, yeah. Because okay, yeah. so obviously we had that well, qualifier in South Africa, didn't we? And that all went pear-shaped. And that's when we all we knew we were all on a slippery slope in terms yeah. of people retiring. When oh, Afghanistan let's take, on it, take... let's not get on in South Africa. Let's <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Were you on that trip, Shady? Yeah, yeah, no, let's, let's, let's not, let's, let's, let's not, let's not. I don't, I, 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 I would, I, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to come, come at Ryan again. That was a, but that was, you're right. I think you're right. That was a time when I think a lot of guys were coming to the end. And 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 it was maybe starting to start because it'd been such a successful team for many years, starting from yeah. around that 2005 period where you dominant, you know, won the won the cup, etc., qualified for the World Cup, you know, played in so many tournaments. <clears throat> that World Cup qualifiers, I remember, it just seemed like team was maybe starting to. Yeah. Just start, I know, and I'm not going to disrespect any of you and say you know you're yeah. all, all top players, but it just seemed like this this time now to. To bring in, bring in, bring in, bring in new and players. other teams were evolving far quicker than us as well. So yeah. they were they, they were in different. Ireland's transition was four years before when they lost when we were at our best in two thousand and five. Mm-hmm. Ireland were was going downhill, so they had three years of not doing well. So it was just it was just a. Well, what's interesting story. too, though, Gavin, is, is just looking at it is also the personality traits of of the coach. You know, and and I hope Steiner doesn't mind me saying this. He's quite a conservative person by nature. And I do think his game plans and his selections and everything will be will reflect him as a personality. And, and Carl, you could maybe talk about Grant later on. But I remember Andy Moles was 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 really as a batter. He, he understood batting better than any coach I've kind of worked with. But it's just it was interesting how the coach's output, um, you know, impacted a little bit too. You know, and, and to be yeah. fair, for coaches they were fairly naive to the whole T Twenty process too. But you know, I think for T Twenty as a coach. You've got to be the eternal optimist, uh, I think, in, in hindsight yeah, exactly. and reflection now. So, anyway. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, that kind of, you know, 2009, that kind of South Africa game, they go on to score over 200. We were never really in that game. We got 80 in response. Again, Kyle got, got a couple of runs, but nobody really nobody really hung around with him. But, I mean, again, big ass to go out and set about chasing 200 against a, 
upper middle South African attack. So all in all, pretty disappointing tournament. Um, there was, but, there, but it's unfortunate because, like you say, the England game in particular, um, I thought you guys played you, you, you yeah. played well in that game. And again, it was just Stuart Broad at the end. I remember yeah, Bob, look, Mac, look, the, the New Zealand know. game knocked the, knocked the wind out of us, honestly, Shaky. That South Africa game was a bit of a formality, I think. It was uh, the lads, you could just tell by turning up to the ground and the warm ups. It was with so much, we had always, Scotland sides always had high intensity in warm ups, always had, always prepared well. And I just, I just knew. But and then, uh, then I think me and Ryan opened against South Africa. Dale Stein bowled the speed of light, didn't he? He did. I, I think the first ball. He bowled the first, he bowled the first I over. I, ra- I rallied to third man for one, and he was No, but I, I hit my first ball. It's, I mean, I'm not good off my legs any time. <laughs> I, I hit my first ball for four. But I've never the ball has never come off the bat faster or quicker. And I remember going to wide, fine legs. So I've hit my first ball four, and I'm thinking this next one's definitely going to be a bouncer. So I stood. I, I actually remember the big boundary playing it almost from the boundary ropes, sort of. But he, he went for the double bluff and and, and cartwheeled me. So yeah, one up thing. So. Bold the speed of light on a quick bit. My memory, my memory. I had you pulling him. Didn't you pull him for six? Or is no. that just that the clip I of your legs? My no, memory's Kyle, I, 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 flicked, I flicked one off my pads, literally first ball, one bounce four, and I, I never timed the ball as well, and it's never gone to the boundary as quick. <laughs> Red does new funky bats, remember? Those oh, funky those bats, funkies, everyone, everyone yeah. was getting them going, these are amazing, remember? I, I remember Ryan's face when he hit the four, came down to glove him, and I'm, he's looking at me going, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 I'm, shot, oh, lad. Just... I'm going shot, lad, he's going, um, yeah, I don't and then, and and then you start to fuck him over cover standing next to the square leg umpire next ball. Yeah, <laughs> he gave him a high five and walked off. So, <laughs> no, no, he was, he was, he, yeah. I mean, that I mean he was quick. Um, he was at his peak. He was at his. He was at his peak as well. There, so uh, yeah. Rapid. It was flying through. I remember that. It was a quick wicket. A good, beautiful wicket. Absolutely. For saying that, do you remember the, what's his name? Um, who's the Holland lad who played for Australia that bowled the speed of light? There, that is. That is. <laughs> I, to be fair, I never played that game, obviously, Gav, um, but was standing on the sideline. <laughs> don't know if I told you, but I was standing on the sideline thinking, Jesus, that's pretty sharp. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was yeah, I remember quick as well. I thought the Dutch lads were taking the mickey when they were standing on the 35 yard ring. You know, I, 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 and Nana's, Nana's got it through, but the biggest disappointment was that I got out to Peter Sealar because I was playing every shot I could because Nana's was pinging it through the other end. Yeah, too right. Do you remember the game? Moments of that World Cup, just before we move on and go into 2016. <laughs> but, you know, something that you all got G'd up about and had something to celebrate was, I think, when Kyle caught Butch, uh, Boucher mm, on the, yeah. the long arm boundary. I mean, that still gets showed now when they show uh, when they show great catches, but there was definitely something for you all to cheer and celebrate about when that happened. Yeah, yeah. Great. Off, off, off drummer, wasn't it? Yeah, drummer bowled a perfectly um, perfect uh, half volley Guys. to hit down to long. Uh, plans. There were plans, Carl. <laughs> Thank you. Can I disappear for two minutes? Is that all right? And you just carry on? Yeah, we can do that. Thank don't, you. Be too, don't be too long. <laughs> and, um, there, 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 was, there was also a moment... Um, I'm not sure whether it was that game or not, or it was a New Zealand game. It might have been a New Zealand game when it was all sort of rushing away from us that someone skied one to mid-off. Do you remember? And Wrighty was at mid-off, and because he had a bit of a bad groin, didn't he? But I remember <laughs> Drummo, like it went high enough, Drummo was at mid-on, and was like looking around going, is Wrighty going to go for that or not? And he didn't. <laughs> Drummo ran for mid-on in front of Wrighty. And it went through his hands, didn't it? And he kneed it for four from inside the boundary. Yeah. And then he... I remember that. I don't, oh, God, I remember that. That was a good moment. I remember that. I, just summed, it. It. I just summed it up. Chase it down. Chase it down. To, uh, and it was a decent crowd. And the crowd are in there. And, and he dived at the last second to try and get it. And the crowd went nuts at <laughs> It was all going so well, wasn't it? That, was a, that sounds like quite, you know, it sounds like... Um, just a lot, a lot didn't go right. Feel sorry for you, Gav, actually talking through that campaign. Um, it yeah, was, it was a tricky uh, one. It was, it was a tricky one. We had a bit of a cut, bit of a cut, but I, but I also think you had a, a really inexperienced team. Um, and it was either going to be, I think it was an out of form team more than anything, Shaker. It was just yeah. a non, it was just a, a, a team of just sort of playing sort of 50% of their ability, probably was a fair assessment of it. 
all of us, well, obviously Carl did okay. Yeah. Uh, all, all of us. I, don't, I can't think of one person, uh, Carl, that actually stood out in any of those games. Obviously, hey, Carl, yeah, I'll be, in the first one. I'll be, I'll be honest, like, you know, thinking back to that tournament, there, there was, for me to actually play, um, must have been a bit of a gut call from, from you guys because mm-hmm. I, I've, I've never really been convinced that I was that great a T20 player. And although I did play a little bit for Durham, and I'm not sure how much I played at that point, I guess in T20 cricket, I was certainly probably quite inexperienced. And, um, you know, it was one of those moments that I kind of surprised myself, actually, within that within yeah. that tournament. Um, but you kicked on the next year with Durham and got loads, didn't you, in the one-day stuff? Yeah, yeah. I know that, yeah, because I, I, I always thought that was a little bit of a catalyst for you in your, your one-day career. Because you, I always remember you just, like, you went from a boy to a man within two years of really sort of giving it a touch. And I, I think that might have been a nice... Kicking st- yeah, was, sort of starting block. Yeah, you know, you know what it's like. Like when when you played at Durham as well. You know, you're batting in the river riverside. So I mean, the pitches they're not they're not minefields by any stretch, but they they always had a little bit of help for for the seamers, mm. didn't it? And all of a sudden, you know, I think what probably helped then we played an absolute road at the Oval, didn't we? And the, yeah. there was no demons whatsoever in that in that pitch. And um, you know, whoever we were coming up against, facing whether it was Dale Stain or, or whatever, and obviously it was flying through. But I just remember thinking that it was an absolute, absolute road. And yeah. but you know, I guess whoever was the mastermind, you and and whoever behind the scenes there to give me opportunity, probably was a bit of a catalyst to, to mm. me actually realizing I can play white ball cricket. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or in that way, you know. Yeah, but you're always set up. You're always set up technically sound and I think yours you hung back a lot so you it suited you to play on good quick pitches didn't it more than anything yeah. I think that suited your technique and as soon as you as soon as you realize you could trust your your technique then you know I, I can remember it because I think we went and played a couple of a tournament uh, literally the next year I think it might have been in Ireland again and you came back sort of you actually showed us how to sort of hit some big balls you showed us some sort of boundary clearing techniques um, but yeah that was it but at least one good thing came out of it <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so come to the end of that campaign, and then there's quite a lengthy break between playing again in the T20 World Cup, and that came again in 2016 um, when uh, when Preston Momsen led the side. But obviously, Kyle, you were very, <clears throat> very much, very much part of the team. Um, three games: Zimbabwe, Afghanistan, and Hong Kong. You must have been looking at that, thinking, right, we need to win two out of three of those games. Yeah, look, we we went in there and we we genuinely felt we had a, a great opportunity. But you know, just for those um, who do do watch this after shaky, that we ha- we weren't actually in the World Cup. You know, it was one of those. It was one of the first times, or maybe the second time, because we didn't play in the one before. I don't think um, that they they made a group stage before, like it was a pre World Cup almost. You know, so mm-hmm. we'd qualified to get to this effectively another qualifier to hopefully make it into the the, the next stage so um we genuinely thought we had a had a sniff there and, and we played two pretty good games against zimbabwe and, and afghanistan and played and lost two close games and uh, we actually had the afghan game we, we, i thought we were pretty much home uh, we we'd got off to a good start myself and george had got us off to a bit of a flyer more georgian than than me and um George was taking down a young Rashid at the time. And then, uh, yeah, I just think we, we sort of whittled it away, really, and we weren't able to chase that score. I can't remember. It must have been a handful of runs, maybe, um, in the single figures that we just end up losing by. So that was that was absolutely gutting. So to then then get an opportunity to, to play Hong Kong uh, in our last game and, you know, what I guess is class still as a World Cup, uh, although we all kind of know it's not. It, it kind of got the monkey off our back a little bit because we, we did win a game in the... In a World Cup, and we beat Hong Kong reasonably convincingly in a in a rain reduced game because it was another one of those thinking right here's a chance to get a win in a World Cup. And what happened? The rain came in and made things all tricky, and it was all manic again. Are we playing? Aren't we? And you know, in 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 India, they cover the entire field, and all of a sudden it's it's the end of the world. And then they take these covers off, and there's this this pitch that we played on, which was absolute uh, belter, but. Um, so yeah, so in the in the end, you know, disappointing, I guess, shaky. It was a short, short, short tournament, but 
to get that monkey off her back, so to speak, and with a, a victory in a World Cup was 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 pretty pretty special, I guess. Oh, good. Um, by that time, you'd, you you know we've talked a lot about the first two World Cups and the fact that you weren't really picking a team based on the people being specialists. By the time that World Cup qualification stroke World Cup came around, you seem to have more guys playing in roles that probably were specialised for T20 cricket, guys like George Munsey, for instance. Yeah. Well, let, let, you know, I touched on that a tournament in UAE when, when I was captain that uh, we're still with the method and the theory of playing through uh, through the middle of the innings. Uh, and then this this time round, we were certainly more boundary focused. Um, you know, I'm just just a couple of names. You know, myself and Munzee would open the batting, and uh, the, like I said, the previous tournament, I was I was batting three, trying to bat through. There was not even a, a sniff of trying to do that in this tournament. Uh, we'd changed the way we played in the in the qualifiers and ended up qualifying really convincingly. Uh, and then you've got the likes of Munzee, which is first real crack at it, probably. And, and a sort of fresh-faced, strong, strong young lad, reverse sweeping, sweeping, um, all all the shots. You know, it's just it was refreshing to see someone come and play in that style. And then a, a crossy coming in at, at three, which was dangerous. And you still had uh, Barrow, uh, Callum, Preston. You know, I'm not even sure Callum played played that game. Uh, Callum was still uh figuring his, his, his game out, I think. You know, he was a good good cricketer, but what he's produced in the last couple of years has been pretty spectacular, to be honest, for someone who used to bat 11, Gav, when, and Rhino, when, when we went to South Africa. Remember, he was a number uh, 11. Nuts. That's when it changed, because uh, he got called for his uh, his bowling, and then he just started mm-hmm. whacking it in the nets. And, yeah, he batted 11 in the qualifiers, didn't he, in South Africa? Yeah. And yeah, he was terrible. A- he was absolutely dreadful. He wasn't even a good at number 11. I remember the stupid. I remember him getting out, throwing his bat on the floor or something. One game, something really weird. It was like Mr. Bean batting at one point. <laughs> you would never, have, you'd never have thought he would score a hundred at the Grange uh, to beat to beat England. Tremendous, honestly. The trans- fair, he's a proper, tra- he's a proper talented sportsman. I mean, he's just a proper. You're a good mindset, but he's pretty good at everything he picks up. So yeah. Once he decided he was going to be a batter, I think. Uh, yeah, but it's yeah. it's amazing. He's a he's a credit to uh, well, he's just a good example to anyone that adversity thrown at him, action chucking, and then the next minute he's. I, I always thought he he kept he kept. I don't know what he's like now. Obviously, I know I know Cal quite well. But when the times I played with him, he, he kept things <laughs> so simple. He was just see ball, hit ball, ball. He was just everything. He's never a massive thinker about it. Because I, I remember that game against because he played against New Zealand in the T20, and he just ran in. You know, he got he went for a few, didn't phase him. And he was the one who stood out and just sort of just said, you know, he's got a bit about him. You know, he's not yeah. he's, he's not getting wickets, but he had a really nice, simple outlook on cricket. I don't know whether that changed now or not, Carl, but he's, he's always been, you know, he wasn't a deep thinker, yeah. which I think helps. Yeah, uh, <laughs> By the way. Yeah, uh, I mean, look, he's progressing uh, uh, an absolute star with the bat, you know, and what he's done is he's done some of them, probably some of the most special things any Scottish cricket has ever done and possibly will do for, for some time, you know, we've got some special players and I've no doubt people will will equal uh, or do something similar to what he's done um, in, in time, you know, when opportunities come around but just going back to that that team you know, look, we had it was a, a team probably coming into their best years you know the likes of Barrow was at, at the World Cup at the Oval remember Gav and, and mm-hmm. uh, you know it's just a it was it's, you know, would have been teens still then wouldn't he yeah. you know I can't, can't actually remember and but he, he was a talent wasn't he you, you could tell he was a, he was going to be a player and uh, we had a young Watt coming through and an and experience of Con DeLange as well and uh, you know Josh Davey a, a Gav May who's, you know, I guess was probably early in his career then. Um, but we had we had an, an exciting team, certainly a, quite an explosive, explosive batting lineup with uh, um, with a, probably a, a less experienced bowling attack, which in, in turn has actually become one of the reasons why we've been so successful, actually, because the bowlers have um, really shone through, you know, uh, yeah. real depth in that. So, it was a um, lot more, it was a lot more, you had a lot more boxes ticked over your, with your attack. Oh, they had pace, didn't you? You had pace and spin, and then guys who bowled very straight around the wicket. Yeah, 
and a lot more slower balls and things in your time, Kyle. You've obviously adapted over the four or five years between the last World Cup. You can tell now watching you guys take the field and you, you, you've got plans, whereas 2007, 2009, I think it was just, let's give it a go. There wasn't wasn't much thought going into it. Um, would that be fair to say? Um, yeah. I mean, it's hard for me to... to to say too much in those you know previous campaigns you know we're, we're all learning as we go along and we're continually learning now uh, but there, there's a clear message and I can go as far back as to when we were playing Holland in Aberdeen years ago in a couple of ODIs and Gav it might have just been just as you retired perhaps it might have just been on cusp just as you retired I can't remember whether you were there or not but it was around that time because um, I remember it being quite a sad time obviously you you hang out your boots and um, I do remember Bukhari, we just said, right, let's go full and straight to Bukhari. And every time we missed, you know, if we haven't got extreme pace uh, or the ball's doing a bit reversing, if you miss a Yorker at the pace that we were potentially bowling, it's going to get hit out of the park. And Bukhari was, was a dangerous hitter of the ball. Uh, and, and he took us apart. And that day, I always remember that day, we, we sat down as a group and we said, look, if you don't bowl a bouncer or you don't bowl a slower ball or you don't bowl a slower ball bouncer or, or whatever, um, it means the margin for you when you miss your Yorker is going to be so much smaller because you're not bowling any other variation. So if, if your field is perhaps set for bowling into the pitch and getting hit to the long boundary and he still hit, hits you for six, like fair play to him. But what that actually does is gives you more room for error, error with other deliveries. That you bowl. So, mm, so, you have to, so you have to be willing... Look, there's a time and a place that you say, right, you just need to nail a Yorker here or bowl one into the hip and get them off strike. Uh, uh, and, and each bowler will have their own ball. It's probably best to, to do those sorts of things. But when it comes down to it, you have to be, you've probably got to have three three different deliveries. Not in every ball, perhaps, not in every field that you set, but you've at least got to have two options. Um, but you've got to be willing to bowl them. And the team's got to be accepting that, you know what, if he bowls a bouncer here, he can get hit for six. And if he does... Absolutely. Well, that, that, that's part of the game, but we can't now come down hard on him because he's run up and bowled a bouncer because if his field set right, if he's got no one out on the leg side and runs up and bowls a bouncer, then fair enough, you give him, a, give him both barrels, you know. But um, yeah, that's just, that's just you know, it was all learning and, and you know, even to following campaigns, you know, you never get things right, do you? With the hell, you make mistakes all the time, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, the chaps... Just a few quick questions, and then I'm going to have a little bit of quick fun to finish up. Um, do you think we've improved as a T20 side? I think that's pretty... pretty oh, massive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you can know, we, it's, a joy, it's a joy to watch. Shaky the last couple of years. Test Nations? Do you think we're we're placed nicely now to, to be able to compete? Do you want to? Do you want to play yeah. Test Cricket? <laughs> How many what bouncers are not being allowed to play? To, how many are the, bouncers are they allowed? What are the yeah, key exactly. to, this, to this current crop? What are the key? What's important now? What happens to this team in the next four, five, six years? We've got quite a quite a young quite a young team, a couple of old boys, um, who still obviously keeps you know Kyle still keeping himself fit. But what 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 from from two older captains who've been there done it. What what are you excited about with this current team, and, and who are the who are the kind of stars to look out for? I tell you something in terms of what what's next. I, I think it's highlighted quite a lot. Sort of the era we played from that two five to two ten is that we didn't evolve and stay up with the game. We probably took it for granted that we were a semi decent side and we'll win games. And I think this side now, uh, whilst they're probably I would say they're at the best, they've got plenty more to offer with the talent and the youngster lads and the freedom that they're playing with. It's more so for the coaching staff, I guess. It's just to, it's to keep things fresh and, and keep evolving, stay with the times, and not and not find that three or four year lull. You're going to have a, you're going to have a sort of a season where it's going to be a struggle getting you know people be out of form and things, but keep evolving and keep staying fresh with the game. And like I said, with the talent and the and the freedom that these lads play with, you know, they, you, you can start winning some proper games and keep and consistently win some proper games. That's uh, that's that's all like that. I think to what we get out of what we talked about, I think that's our, our biggest regret during those four or five years. 
Yeah, and, and just having, you know, even luckily coached a few of the guys at the, at the regional setup, Sheik, I mean, there's some proper good youngsters coming through. And, you know, just doing throwdowns with the guys last year or the year before and doing throwdowns with some of our guys, the, the guys hit the ball proper hard now. You know, I think they're all, one thing I would say is they're all stronger, fitter. They're all buying into um, going to the gym and, and getting stronger to hit the ball harder. I think they've all got better techniques to hit the ball. So I think that's huge progress. But Look I, how fit I, you are on that picture, though, right? Look at that, how fit you are on that picture with Graham Smith. Yeah, no, thanks, Gav. That was a good error. It was a good error. That neat, and I'd been in hospital in Bangladesh for a month. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, but, yeah, I think, I think some of the guys hit the ball. But I, I, I would love to see, and I know this goes beyond, you know, beating testing. I, I still think we're going to. I, you know, we, we, we beat England, and I think, we beat Bangladesh in a T20 fixture. I, I have no doubt we will beat teams. But I'd like to challenge some of the guys. You see some of the some of the Afghanistan players and some even the Nepal players featuring in the Big Bash or featuring in the IPL and things like that. And I don't see any reason why some of our crop coming through. If that you know, even getting into the hundred setup, you know, with with down in England, we can get three or four players exposed into that. Then uh, you know, why not? Do you think? Do you think? <laughs> You look at Ireland, they have been able to win. Kyle, any danger, you can just pull them all out. <laughs> How have you still managed to hold your hair? Oh, yeah. I, I, I know it was going there. You, I think there's been Which a visit to somewhere. Right? In. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> um, just, but mm-hmm. just on that, your, your point was good, Ryan, but do you not think the fact that they look at Ireland... They have been able to win on the big stage. Uh, and a lot of their players get included in these tournaments. Do you think it's because correct. until we actually win it? I mean, the boys just went and played in the, the Canada tournament. Yeah, yeah. yeah. was there, Munzee was there, and they did very, very well. Anyway. I agree. The PSL, um, IPL would obviously be amazing, but we do need to get more of our players playing in that. But the only way it's going to happen is if you get recognised once or uh, twice. 100%, 100%. But I suppose if you're setting your aspirations that, then the, the, the victories on the big scene will, 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 will come along. So I suppose it's, it's not just set your sights to beat a big team. I think set your sights higher. And I think beating, beating the big teams will become a given because some of the, you know, that, that, and the more exposure what, you know, these guys get to T20 cricket, then, then absolutely. The one thing I think, I think, and guys need to go away and, and think about this is, is I don't think our wickets, particularly in Scotland, you know, for, for one or two months of the year are that conducive to go out and, and score on, on the good wickets. So the more the guys can get out and play in different, better wickets and, and get used to the 171, 180s. Granger's a great wicket, as we saw against England, but the more they can play on those wickets, I think, you know, I think we've got guys well set up to go and, to go and do really well in it. So. Ryan, I think you... Carry on, Gavin. No, go on, I'll try. Um, I was, I'm just going to say, like, just touching Rhino's point there, you know, I think... A, a real focus, you know. You can talk about a lot of stuff around the performance team and the and the some of the the you know the, the youngsters coming through the system. But it's so important that we find a way to improve our our competition in house. So that doesn't necessarily mean league cricket, perhaps, because it, it, league cricket is kind of what it is wherever it is in the country, uh, whether it be in Scotland or England. Like we can improve it and. Uh, but it, it's kind of kind of what it is. But so long as those players are playing more formats, which the, the national team are playing uh, in terms of T20 or, or, or 50 over cricket, that, that's also going to help. But the, the internal competition, you know, the, the regional system, the, I know there's been lots of effort put in there and we actually played one, one, one regional game this year. Well, it was two, two in the same day and it was brilliant games, high scoring games at, at Force. And yeah. I know Force has put a lot of effort into... Um, in developing their square and their wicket and stuff like that, but we need to keep pushing and developing that competition. Correct. Uh, to, 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 and even to, to the point, Carl, if, if if the budget will allow and you could get a sponsor, even to take that tournament for you know one week of the year or two weeks of the year to to foreign to somewhere foreign if you, if it allows or, or or take that tournament to even to a county ground just for a week where you get access to it and a good wicket. And then have the another week here locally. If you could take a time out and get five or six games of T20 under your belt in a week, and then five or six T20 games in your belt under another week, it's ten more games than the guys are currently playing on good wickets. I think that would really help evolve things pretty quickly. So. 
yeah yeah no you're right and mm. you know there's no reason you see usa linking up with a uh uh ipl team and and correct uh, there's no reason why we we can't potentially do something similar in terms of our regional structure you know i i don't know some sort of you know, IPL tournaments are on. You can send some of your best youngsters from the regional series to go in bowl in the nets. And I don't know, you know, there's, there's just all sorts of links these days. But, you know, yeah. I think USA have done something pretty special there. But in terms of in terms of performance, you know, we have to be willing, continue to be willing to win. You know, if you're not willing to go out there and win the game and be brave to do it, then, then we'll fall short against the best teams. And, um, you know, I think, the guys believe that now and because they've tasted it, they know where the bar is set. Uh, we've had, you know, we, we still haven't shown as much consistency as what we would have liked because we've lost um, games of cricket we should never have done, but that's the nature of sports sometimes. But the, the fact that guys have to be able, be willing to go out and win a game of cricket is is a, a real change in mindset and something that's held us in, in good stead in recent years. So uh, that that's a, that's a huge thing huge thing being brave to do that and mm. uh, but it all starts from like we said the uh, developing giving guys more exposure in, in the levels below in terms of inside scotland and we have to keep finding competition and good competition for Can guys, I... guys to get exposure right chaps you've given up quite a lot of your evening i know some of us uh, mr hamilton for instance has a very small 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 baby that he'll be needing to get back or is it sleep or is, um, I've locked him in the room. It's a soundproof it's room, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but what we're going to do to finish with is have a quick bit of fun. Now, I don't want you to take as long as the 50 over bunch did because it's just turned into a lengthy <laughs> chat. Um, you're getting to pick your all-time T20 Scotland World Cup team. You've got three World Cup campaigns to pick from. Yet the, the, you have to have played in a, in a, in a, in a, in a World Cup. Gab, I'm giving you four picks. Ryan, I'm giving you four picks. Kyle, I'm giving you three picks. Oh, goodness me. All right. So you get one pick at a time. Are we so, going to do a batting order or are we just going to pick has four? To be and then... a batting order, yeah. It's got to be a team, proper team. Okay. So, so you get Ryan, the easy you your first pick. Who's your first pick? My first pick. Uh, to open the batting, number one, uh, McLeod. Okay, nice pick. Ryan? I'm going to go with Kyle to, to open with him. And because Kyle's won a game of cricket as captain, I'm probably going to make him captain too in the T20 stakes. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Shall we just go through the present T20 team? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> you know what, it's so, it's, it's, it's so hard to look at this. And yeah, the exactly. You guys must have looked at it because I'd love to see, you know, even the 2007 crop, Playing in the current environment, or with a bit more nafs about them, you know, I think there were some seriously good cricketers. Listen, there, was a lot, there was a yeah. lot. Of good play, there was a lot of good players back then as well. I think it so, just comes back to the fact that we didn't have much experience. Okay, so, so you know, are we picking on? Was what picking on, we picking or on, what we pick on? Just pick on the T Twenty alone, but pick on. You know, if you were picking this side, <laughs> those three, yeah. Who, yeah. Would yeah. who would you want? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, Kyle, what's your first pick? So he's um, batting three, this lad. Uh, no, I'm I'm going to mix it up. I'm not going to say he's batting three. Uh, well, to be fair, it's pretty unlucky not to be opening, I think. But Munzee, I'm going to put Munzee in there in T20. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, he's probably going to have to bat at three. Um, yeah, okay. so I'm going to put him in there. Come on, lads. We need somebody from the old guy. Okay, I, I, do you know what? We, I, you're going to have to do it, but I think Rhino's going to have to bat four all day long. Uh, yeah, all day long. That's... You didn't even get mentioned by any of the three previous World Cup captains. So, Gav, that's what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. What, in the one day? Jesus in Christ. The one day, okay. In the one day, he didn't, he, he didn't get included in the front. You, you will have heard it by now. It'll be, it'll be out by now. But oh, absolutely. I fought, I fought his corner for him. You know, I had, I had, I had, I've, I, seen, I've seen Ryan hit bigger balls than any of these lads have hit. I'm with you, Ryan. Don't you worry, lads. Oh, Gav, it's very so, that. You know, I, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just pulling back the dropping at the oval. Yeah. 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 Somerset hundred yeah. at the Grange. Hey, right, was... Rhino, I would, I would have, um, I would have possibly put you to open and meet about three. Uh, if if I was selected from Gav, uh, no, you selected me, didn't you? Rhino? Yeah, 
But you went. I feel like my bad now, Gav. I feel like I've selected everyone. So, but the next no. pick I had down here, it isn't you, Gavin, unfortunately. No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't want to be in this side. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> I only ever hit four fours in T20 cricket. So don't be, yeah. I, I've gone and and he could easily bat five, but he's he's a, he's, a, he's an all rounder. I've gone Barrow. I think Barrow is as good as yeah, I've seen in T20 cricket. He's the all round package. He bats, he bowls, and he he can Agreed. hit like miles. He's really handy. He's found a real knack of bowling in T20 cricket. He's obviously not got much pace, but he bowls a lot of the. He's pretty reliable, Kyle, to you as, as, as captain to, to come on. He bowls, he bowls some smart smart stuff. I tell you what, we'd have been a brilliant selection committee, us four. We're just, <laughs> just agreeing. How hard can it be? We'd have, I'll, I'll have even picked you in South Africa, Shaky. Thank you very much, Gav. <laughs> um, okay, that's a pretty handy top five. You know, that's... But well, let's, let's... I'm sure in the bottom half we're going to get a few more of the, the old mm. guard in now. Um, number six. Or you don't need to pick number six. You want to pick somebody else? I mean... Can I just say, I'll take one of my choices, number three, that the wicketkeeper be Colin Smith. Yeah. Well, he got the he got the 50 over gloves as well. Um, yeah. I think that's a tough one. I, I was really torn between crossy and floppy. Floppy... In T20 cricket, I would be similar to your thinking. Uh, I think. But I, I would love to see... But I see floppy, I mean... With with your he, the ability to stand up is unbelievable in in T Twenty cricket with that thing and potentially playing a bit more T. I mean, he had the ability to hit a big ball flopping mm. too. So yeah, he's not a bad shot. Let's, yeah, let's but he's probably probably about eight, he's probably about eight though, wasn't he? Seven or eight. Before, 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 it sounds like he get fifty or something against England uh, at that. Mm. He, he got he smacked. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it was fifty, but but you know, I, I'm obviously Crossy's a. As a fine current player, and and I would have him have him in my my team any day. But I'm going to go with this one just for the uh, the experience of floppy. Um, yeah, put it this way, a funky bats, which would help any T20 yeah. team. So. <laughs> put it this way: if you boys play in the next, we could be having this conversation again sometime, and and the decision is swayed because Cross is a you know he's a seriously talented kid, and I, I think he's got a lot to still offer Scottish cricket. So mm, agreed. He's got a chance to prove us wrong too. That's yeah, right. maybe yeah, I think I think the, the amount of cricket and the consistency and the uh, and I could put on one hand over ten years of playing with floppy. How many mistakes he made? No, we're picking a keeper that's played enough. I don't know. Cross longest longest stretch, stretch routine I've ever seen from any cricketer. He loved a stretch, didn't he, floppy? Yeah. Oh, well, because he was stiff as a board, that's why. He's got a lot more stretch than the rest of us anyway, so... We need a number six. Who's number six? Who's an all-round? Right? Floppy. We need an all-round. Right? Right? No, I think Floppy's going to bat seven or eight. I think we've got another batter ahead of him. We're number six, have... surely. So we'll, we'll leave flo Floppy floating just now. So mm. who's our number six then? Um, I've had three. I've had three picks. I want to save one for a bowler. If that's right. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm thinking, trying to think some some spinners in there. Um, obviously, not everyone's played. You know, if we're just talking about T20 World Cups, we probably probably can't be far off mentioning someone like a a Delanger or someone like that who was pretty influential in the World Cup in in. Uh, in India, um, and he's certainly an all-rounder. You know, not that he got a chance to really show much there, but I think he's a pretty steady shout for an all-rounder's option. Um, would you bat? Would you bat? Would you? Would you bat con? Bat at con at six? Bit six or six or seven, probably. I'm thinking so, I'm thinking seven. Where, where with, floppy. With floppy at eight, and then you still mm. got a number six open. Oh, we've got plenty you of all-round. I'm just, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to think of the other all-round seamers that that are going. I'm, I'm, my mind's going blank at the I'll moment. Chuck, I'll chuck a, I'll chuck a name and I'll look. Uh, We've got Dougie Brown, but it's just whether you uh, go on his World Cup for us short period or what he could have done. Um, well, see, to be fair, he, we didn't pick him in the fifty-over one, just because we did, we felt he maybe hadn't, you know, he had okay. a Dougie did it, did amazing things, played for England, etc. But we just. Didn't feel we played that much with Scotland, and I think it's quite similar in this. Yeah, I think um, one name. Well, look, who's are we going to? You're going to have Bla you're going to have Blaney in that team. 
the other yeah, name yeah. I was thinking to put forward that I think is really good at this format, um, I think is a very handy character, Safian Sharif. Yeah, I had Safi down. He could bat. Where are we gonna where are we gonna slot magic into this? Yeah, magic's gotta be in there somewhere, doesn't he? I think Magic's gonna he can't well, bat nine. I think here on this, right? I, I think Madge is a brilliant spinner, right? But I I don't know, and this was maybe just me, but I don't know if Offies and his record in terms of runs per over and things like that. I, I don't know if the left arm spinner sliding in more accurate. Mark Watt is a better yeah. better one T twenty bowler. I, I you know, Magic's pace in the fifty over and Magic's a brilliant off spinner, but uh, that's for debate. But I had Madge or, or Watty, one of the two. Yeah. So number nine is <laughs> number nine at the moment is Watt and Madge, and we'll take an all we'll take an overall vote of that. But let's just get that down. Well, if, uh, if we got if we got the two of those, the only reason I threw Con in there was because he was quite influential in that that one World Cup. Obviously, he he might fall in the same category as Dougie Brown. Perhaps didn't uh, play as much. What about uh, Righty? Righty, yeah. Righty. Who's going to open the bowling? Are we going? Uh, uh, Sa- uh, Safian Sharif. Would you would you partner him with a Blaney, or is there any other names that you'd have in the hat? Nelly. Nelly. Is Nelly a better T Twenty bowler than Blaney? I Don't think that's. What it, I think it comes down to T Twenty, the the style of bowling, and if it was not shaping. Nelly, maybe. He, he, he's the best Yorker bowler we had, though, and he had an ability to tailor yeah. it. I think, he was, I think he was a brilliant death bowler, Nella. He really was. Brilliant Just death bowler. Just between him and Blaney for the, for the, for the thing. So. Right. So I'll tell you what we've got, chaps. So we've got Blaney and Nell. Are we giving Safi a spot, current, current guy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So here's what we've got. We've got McLeod and Kyle at the top of the order. Munsey at three. Watson at four. Barrington at five. Condelang at six, Colin Smith at s- no, sorry, he's at eight. Oh, we don't have a six. <laughs> no, we're not agreed on that, is we? We're not agreed on that. So we need no matter like, who's a batter, who's a, who's a, who gets a big ball. Doesn't have to be an all rounder. Um, did did uh, Neil McCallum play in any T Twenty World Cups? Yeah, he did. Didn't do, didn't do brilliantly at the ones I've seen. But yeah, I mean, but you're still he, bowling in this. You'd fit in there perfectly. Well, if you uh, ne- I've never bowled in the T20 game. I know. To be fair, you're going to bat, you're going to put Gavin at six, aren't you? Gavin Hamilton, man. Yeah, Hamilton. Done all right for Scott. I would give up. I would give Gav Gav number six. You yeah, know, I would. Um, I would because le- left hand option as well. Left hand option. That's a good solid top six. And so he reads murally. He can read murally, so that's fine. <laughs> So you basically only need to pick. So you've got McLeod, Kyle, Munsey, Watson, Barrington, Hamilton, Pondalanga, Colin Smith at eight, Mark Watt or Maggi as your spinner, Safian at number ten, and Nelly and Blaney or Blaney at eleven. So oh. make the decision: who's going for what? Who's going for Madge? I've I've not I have not to do with what he, but I'll, uh, I'm going to go for Madge for me because of what right. I've seen. One vote, Madge. I'm going to put my hand in and I say I would just what he's done over the years. Um, I, I, I think Watt's got a little bit to go before he overtakes Magic, but I think he's got, he's got ability to, to do that. But for now, Magic gets a spot. Yeah, and, and, and the fact you've got Delanger, um, if, if you're looking a little bit of balance here with a selector's hat on, Magic gets well, you as well, Rhino. You oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Those spinners. Correct. One over, four runs, straight off Jumbo's chest. I mean, I've got to be... Just a team of... What about Kyle bowling at 89 miles an hour as well? So it's not a... Wait, wait, hang on. Hang on, Gav. Do you remember the game we played against (laughs) England at the Grange? And uh, I don't think I'd bowled a ball for Scotland yet at this this stage. And Keith Vetter and whoever was open the batting. And you came to me, Kyle, Kyle, I need you to bowl from from (laughs) up the hill at the Grange. And I don't think I'd ever bowled and uh, you dropped like, it well. Right, I'll have a ball. I bowled, I think, two or three dot balls, and I walked past and whoever was at mid off at the time. I went, If I was batting against me right now, I'd smack myself back over my head and say, <laughs> that, That's literally what Keys did the next ball. So, um, <laughs> I appreciate you, you backed me, you gave me, ch- you gave me the opportunity in the T20 no, World Cup to learn my batting. Clear and then you gave me a chance, See, you gave me chance against England to be a bowler 10% of every contract going forward. Right, Ellie or Blaney for number 11? 
Let's have a vote. Gab, who's your, who's your vote? It's a tough one, but because of the death bowling-wise, I'm going to go Miller. No. Ryan? Again, <laughs> Again tough I'll, one. I'll, 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 I'll give Ryan the, I'll, the last choice here because I'm going to say Blaney, and the reason I'm saying Blaney is he's got more pace uh, and he'd be a little bit more uh, it'd be a bit different to something else we have. You yeah. can't give me the final shot yet. Remember, I fell yeah, out about two years ago. Purpose. You've had a couple of tough decisions over your career, Rhino, and this is another and one. And I've got them all wrong, according to Shaky. Um, <laughs> you know what? This is this is just such an easy cop-out, right? But <laughs> Melly is a brilliant 12th man. He's one of the best 12th men I've ever turned. <laughs> he, he, he is, he's super. Top draw 12th man. Blaney picks it because it'll be harder to drop in the conversation. <laughs> Blaney's well, it, got it. Well, that's if he turns up. That was a cop out, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's another thing. You're taking a risk there. Pardon? You're taking a risk there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've taken a big risk. But okay, no, no, so I, let's just so clearly, clearly name that team. I think we've come up with a pretty good side there. Callum McLeod will open with Kyle Kutzer, George Munsey at three, Ryan Watson four, Richie Bennington five, Gavin Hamilton six, Condalanga seven, Colin Smith eight, Maggi at nine, Sapian Sharif at ten, and we'll <coughs> put Blaney at eleven mm. with Kyle as captain. That's not yeah. a bad. Not and Nello is twelve man. And you've got to go and tell Blaney that he's been dropped for the second game, Kyle. <laughs> So we're in India right now, so he can't just can't jump in his car and drive home this time. <laughs> he got a train, I think. He got his tuk tuk on the way to the airport. I think he, you know, he definitely got a train because he texted me on the way back. <laughs> shaky, shaky, yeah. you've got a phone righty and tell him he didn't get picked, would you? <laughs> righty made the he made the fifty over, but he doesn't make the t twenty. Right nah, the... he's fielding. He's fielding. Let him down. He's fielding. Twenty well, T twenty man. That arm. He, he got to be running singles to right his arm. I mean that. that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he'd be suited for it. So it's more than fifty over. Listen, chaps. It's been a pleasure. It's been really good to 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 take a take a chat through all three campaigns and and hear about your insights. It's we're definitely evolving as a T20 team, if you look at what we've... And it was very similar with the 50 over stuff as well, that, you know, times are changing, teams changing, you know, we're learning a lot more now that we've experienced playing on the on, on the big stage. And, yeah, I just want to say thanks again for, for coming on. Hope you have enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been good fun, Shaky. It's been great fun. Sorry for, 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 me for dropping you, Shaky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for picking Nelly Blaney. Finally, <laughs> finally draw a line under that. You know, it was, I like the somebody, of it. somebody's got to carry drinks, and it just be that I carried them for six weeks. Um, I didn't know how bad it was until Gav dropped me against Holland. Now I, now I am an you know, empathizer. You feel, the pain, you feel the pain. You feel the pain. And then, did you? You, you never ever dropped Gav, did you? Me? No. You no. No. Gav, that's a big call, by the way. Just before we go, we subbed him though, Shaky. We subbed him in Kenya. Is a personal vendetta there or something? As soon as Gav gets the captaincy, you're dropped. Then right, he's dropped. Yeah. He's get, trying to get, get, rid of, get rid of them too. Exactly. <laughs> Remember when we had to sub you, Gav, in Kenya when you were bowling? <laughs> <laughs> that was my biggest. Honestly, oh, why on earth would like Gav? You're going to play tomorrow. Uh, we're going to change the team. We're going to have the ball. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Pick me. <laughs> It is sad because if Gav had continued with the way he was in '99, you know, it would have been it would have been huge for Scot Scotland cricket for many years to yeah, come. Well. Still was a great player, but my only memory was being in Namibia, and we were playing a four day out there, and he he got given he he, he was bowling in a pra he was, we were practicing. Oh, yeah, he used to bowl from eighteen yards in the net. He was bowling eighteen awesome. yards, and he was like, "Tell you what, tell you what." Give me a it's, easy. it's easy when the umpires and don't call wide. He bowled in that game. <laughs> he bowled in that game. He beat the outside edge a couple of uh, times and then it just started going to first slip. No, was... I, I could bowl to left-handers. That was the thing. Left-handers were fine. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. But then you stupidly you got one out against Canada. We ran him out and that was the end of it. <laughs> Here's Charts. I've got to stop now. Yeah, can we stop talking about bowling? I really enjoyed